Yes. I'm sorry, yes. I would like to call the Prince William County School Board meeting to order. A motion is in order for the approval of the closed session agenda. Madam Vice Chairwoman, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session agenda as recommended. Second. Madam Chair, I'd second. Discussion? Please vote. Vote is four yes, three absent, motion passed. Moving on to the motion to enter closed session, a motion is in order. Uh, Madam Vice Chairwoman, I move that pursuant to Ms. Virginia- Ms. White. Thank you. <laughs> I move that pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3711, the Prince William County School Board enter closed session for the following reasons. One, to discuss with staff and division council the appointments and releases of specific employees under Virginia Code 2.2-3711A1 1 and 8. Two, to discuss with legal counsel and take action on the expulsion appeals of students HS18-145 and HS18-150 and the long-term suspension and placement of student HS18-154 under Virginia Code 2.2-37112 and 8. And three, to consult with division counsel regarding legal requirements applicable to the appointment and election of a qualified person to fill the vacancy of chairman at large under Virginia Code 2.2-3711A8. Madam Vice Chair. Ms. Ralston. I second. Discussion? Please vote. The vote is four yes, three absent. Motion passed. Okay. The Prince William County School Board will now enter closed session and return to open session in approximately one hour. The Prince William County School Board. Excuse uh, me, Mrs. Jesse, I'm not ready. I'm, so I'm sorry.
Would all the board members please refresh their screen F5? Thank you. The Prince William County School Board is now returning to open session from closed session. Moving on, the adoption of the closed session agenda, a motion is in order. A motion is in order. Mrs. Satterwhite. Thank you. Um, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session consent agenda as recommended. Madam Chair. <clears throat> Ms. Williams. I second. Discussion? Please vote. Vote is seven yes, unanimous, motion passed. Next item on the agenda is closed session certification. A motion is in order. Madam Chair. Ms. Williams. I move that pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3712, the closed session of Prince William County School Board meeting of April 4th, 2018, be certified by adopting the, resol the following resolution. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Prince William County School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's ability and knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempt from open meeting requirements were discussed in the closed meeting to which the certification resolution applies, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed session meeting were heard and discussed or considered by the school board. Can Madam I have a second? Madam Vice Chair, I second. Discussion? Please vote. Vote is seven yes, unanimous, motion passed. The next item on the agenda is uh, closed session certification. I need a, a motion as an order. Certification. 
I would like to call this meeting of the Prince William County School Board to order. The Ms. Diane Rawson of the Nia Absco District would like to begin this evening's school board meeting on April 4th, 2018 with a moment of silence. We are now ready for a pledge for the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have any students? Please come back and give your name and your school and your grade. Alexander Glover. I am from Rosa Parks Elementary School and I'm in fourth grade. Can we get them closer to the microphone? Your name and your school and your grade. My name is Darcy. I go to Rosa Parks Elementary School and I am in first grade. My name is Brady. I'm in um, Roblo Ro Roga um, Rosa Parks Elementary, third grade. Hi, I'm Chloe, and I'm in Ms. Gutierrez's class, and I'm in second grade. My name is Dakota, and I go to Rosa Parks, and I'm in third grade. Thank you very much. We're moving on to approval of the public meeting agenda. A motion is in order. Madam Ms. Chair, William. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. We have a second. Madam Ms. Chair. Rawson. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, second. Discussion? Please vote. Vote is seven yes, unanimous, motion passed. Moving on to the adoption of the consent agenda. Ms. Williams. Madam Chair, uh, I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting consent agenda as recommended. I need a second. Madam Vice Chair, I second. Discussion? Okay. 
Um, Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Mrs. Jesse. Um, I want to first mention Public School Volunteer Week. Public School Volunteer Week is going to be recognized April 16th to 20th this month. We greatly appreciate all of our volunteers, parents, community members, retirees who come into our schools and volunteer with our students. You are important. Our kids depend on you, and we thank you so much. So um, we want to definitely say something about that. Um, we encourage our citizens and, and parents to volunteer, and I want to say a very public thank you for everything you do for our students. I also want to recognize National Tourette Syndrome Awareness Month. Tourette Syndrome is a neurobiological disorder that's characterized by movements that are uncontrolled and sometimes sounds that are uncontrolled. And this is something that I asked Mr. Iman several years ago, if we could add this to the agenda each year. It's National Tourette Syndrome Awareness Month is recognized May 15th to June 15th each year. And it's something that not only was important to me as an advocate, but most importantly as a parent. And uh, I greatly appreciate the division adding this each and every year. One of the things that I learned from a conference I attended several years ago is when you get into the wild and wonderful world of adding um, alphabet soup to your child's name, you have to get past the, the um, actual diagnosis and you have to start looking at the symptoms. And as, as we're recognizing National Tourette Syndrome Awareness, as we're talking about autism this week, and all of the different issues that some of our kids have to deal with, um, as educators, I hope that we'll also remember that when we're talking about a child who has one of these diagnoses, each child is not just the diagnosis, each child has particular symptoms they're dealing with, and we have to remember that a child is not the diagnosis, a child is dealing with particular issues. There was a saying I heard one time also that if you meet one child with Tourette syndrome, you've met one child with Tourette syndrome, because each child is different. And so I just want to remind, remind all of our educators who work with our children who have specific and special needs in areas in education that need to be addressed and need to be accommodated in the classroom, um, thank you for understanding and considering that our students are each unique individuals. And uh, thank you to the division, thank you for the school board for recognizing National Tourette Syndrome Awareness Month. Ms. Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to say thank you um, and recognize our clerk and deputy clerk um, as we celebrate Administrative Professionals Week. It is obviously something near and dear to my heart as I have uh, been in the profession for a long time now. And I understand uh, that those ladies, along with myself, are the ones that keep everyone else who's in the front lines running and where we need to go, especially us on the board. So thank you very much. Um, and I just think that that's the category of, of our workforce along with our school bus drivers and our janitorial staff and all of the other sort of hidden figures that keep the world moving and keep us going around and it deserve just as much recognition as any other um, profession and division and we just don't say it often enough. So thank you to all the administrative professionals. Anyone else? Please vote. Vote is seven yes, unanimous. Motion passed. Okay. We're now at 1301, a proffer amendment for Dominion Valley Country Club. Mr. Klein, this item is on for action. A motion is in order. A motion is in order. Mr. Dalt. Um, 
Could we have time to ask Mr. Klein questions before we make a motion? Sure. Mr. Klein? Madam Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Waltz, the item before you is a request for proffer amendment for Dominion Valley Country Club. And, and I'll provide a little information for the board, but also some perspective relative to the public, relative to sort of the process. Uh, to the extent that a developer seeks to add additional housing units, they go through the rezoning process as a part of the rezoning process. The school board is then requested by the county planning staff and the planning commission for an impact statement that asks the school board, what is the impact of this particular uh, rezoning upon the school board? In this case, the Dominion Valley Country Club, it was a, originally a residential unit with 3,270 residential units. This is Dominion Valley. Uh, this proposes an amendment to add two additional locations within Dominion Valley, adding 55 additional townhome units from what was previously approved. Based on that, our immediate impact would be, this would add 16 elementary school students, eight middle school students, and 10 high school units. There's a, a couple of items to highlight relative to the impact on the school division. The three schools that are specifically impacted would be Alvey Elementary, where there is currently capacity for, for the additional 16 elementary students, so that would be an impact. Reagan Middle School, which is currently over capacity, so we do not have any cap additional capacity or space at Reagan Middle School for the additional middle, eight middle school students. We all know Battlefield High School is at about 143% of capacity, and there is not capacity or space for an additional 10 high school students. So as a part of the impact, we highlight to the planning commission and the, the uh, to, to the planning commission that in effect, those particular uh, schools have a significant impact because we're over capacity. Uh, the other items I'd like to highlight is that while this came through as a proffer amendment, because it was under the auspice sort of of the original proffer, the current proffer amendment does not include any additional proffer funding or amounts. Therefore, should the Board of County Supervisors choose to approve the rezoning, we are recommending then that, the, uh, that there should be an additional $17,489 per townhouse, townhouse unit per the existing level of service contributions on the existing proffers, generating $961,895. However, the, I think the, the significant point in the letter, letter, and again, the purpose of the letter is to provide input to the planning commission. The school division comment is, and I'll quote, the school division is not in support of any rezoning that increases student capacity at schools already at or in excess of 100% of capacity or a rezoning that causes student capacity at any school to exceed 100% of capacity unless proffers sufficient to mitigate the impact of the school division are received. There, our concern here certainly is Reagan Middle School and Battlefield are already uh, substantially over capacity. Uh, the, the general location, I guess, of the two sites are, there's, there's two pieces of property. If, if you're going in the main entrance to Dominion Valley relative to the giant, if you're going past the giant going to the west, just past the shopping center on the right-hand side, there is a, a, a small tract of land and then the second one is if you go all the way down to where you'd make a right to go to Alvey, on the far northwest corner would be the second tract of land. And again, the, the purpose in, in the sense of being here tonight is to have the board approve a statement to the planning office and the planning commission relative to the, the impact of the, the additional students on the school division. Thank you. Board members, Ms. Satterwhite. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Mr. Klein, thank you for not putting this on consent and bringing it straight to us so we could discuss it. Um, interesting, the two areas where you mentioned the property because the area next to the shopping center, wasn't that originally supposed to have been zoned for commercial? That's correct. Okay, and the area near Alvey, that intersection, if I recall right, that was originally marked with a, with a sign for a church for lease. Do you know anything? That, that's my recollection, is that? 
The yeah. one, the first one, the Market Square. It's um, good evening. It actually does have 110 units in it, plus the commercial area, and they would like to replace 62,000 square feet of the commercial with 137 units. So they want to increase the units in that section by 27, and then the other unit. It does say that it was um, permitted for 70 units, but they want to increase an additional 22 in that for a total of 55 increased residential units. Okay. There is a new church there, the too. There's an unit? Adventist church that's across the street from? Yes. That's a new church there. Okay. Okay. All right. So you said the second part in the northwest corner near Alvey. How many are they adding to that area again? 22. Okay. Okay. Um, as Mr. Klein stated, Reagan is overcrowded. We don't have trailers yet, but judging on what I saw back to school night and my visits to the school, I don't see how we can not have trailers there next year, at least one or two. Um, I'm concerned about overcrowding in many of our classrooms, and um, I've expressed that to staff on a couple of occasions. Um, Battlefield, how many trailers, Mr. Klein, do you remember how many trailers we currently have at Battlefield High School, or Mr. Mulgrew? 16. I believe it's 16. 16, okay, and then? And the anticipation is we're likely to be adding additional trailers there. Every year into. until the new high school opens. Right. right. So Battlefield, we're severely overcrowded. Um, I, the idea of taking commercial property, when even the Board of County Supervisors said last night, we need more commercial so that we can have more support for our schools, I am completely opposed to that. Um, and as, as you stated, um, the school division comments were opposed to any rezoning that increases student capacity. I, I still have problems with the last part of that proffer sufficient to mitigate the impact of the school division. I don't think the proffers are enough to mitigate the impact we have in the overcrowding right now at Battlefield High School. Um, in addition to that, looking at the, at the numbers, looking at the projected numbers, 55 additional proposed townhouses for Dominion Valley, I really don't think it's only going to generate 34 students. Um, we tend to have a lot of kids in our district, and um, I, I think that's way underestimating how many students would be in those 55 um, townhomes. I think it'll probably be more like 100 students coming from those townhomes. So um, I, I'll be voting against this because I've got I've to look out for my community, and this is not going to be doing us any favors. So thank you for not putting this on consent so I have a chance to say that. If I may make a follow-up, the, theoretically, if the board does not approve this, then the school board does not provide input to the process. The assumption from the planning commission and the county, plan, county planning staff is then the school board does not have an issue. I, under, so, I understand the statement. I understand that. And if the rest of the board votes for it, that's fine. I understand that. Like I said, I still have problems with the statement unless proffer is sufficient to mitigate the impact of the school division received. I understand there are legalities involved where we need to have things like that in the statement. I still have a problem with it. As the representative of my community, I've got to say no. And I want to be on the record saying no, we don't need to be adding more townhouses to overcrowded schools right now. And so I just want to go on the record and say that. Ms. Williams? Uh, Mr. Klein, so if I understand you correctly, if we don't approve it, then we don't provide any comment at all to the planning office. We don't say to the planning office that the school board is not in favor um, simply by not approving. There's no statement that goes out. So essentially, if we vote a motion down, we don't provide any at all further detail to the planning office? At this point, that would be the case, yes. And do we know why that is? Because if we don't approve it, it's still an action that there, the planning office should be notified of. The, well, the, again, the, the purpose of the document is to provide input uh, for the impact of those students on the school division. The, the legal side does not ask the school board to take a position on whether the rezoning is appropriate or not. That's a different issue and that's a board of county supervisor's responsibility. Obviously, we have a significant interest particularly in areas where it's substantially overcrowded, as to whether that rezoning goes through or not. Under the law, we are essentially limited to what is the impact on the school division and, and what is the impact on our schools. It, it's, it's back to that discussion of the legal issue that says, what is it that, what, what's the position we're taking, but our hands are also somewhat constrained or tied to providing input back to the planning commission within the construct of the proffer and the rezoning process. I understand that I'm just, uh, I guess I'm a little confused because when we had the presentation, I know that the school board is not directly responsible for approving or 
not approving the division uh, or whatever the county is responsible for, but we can provide comment. So I'm, I'm wondering why we don't approve why we don't provide comment if it's in the negative and how that would get us into legal issues if even if we're our own separate entity i mean i thought it was ex the, did i not understand the attorney then i'm just curious the the person the the school division comments which i read was the accepted acknowledged statement that the board had previously approved for use on such documents to indicate at least our displeasure with what is taking place and the fact that it's moving through the process the basic, basically the way the law is set up for current proffers, the developer can bring forward a proposal. We can say we don't like it. The law provides them an opportunity to mitigate the impact. That mitigation could be either by providing property, which is done when they first opened, or by providing additional monetary resources. The issue here is what's written in the proffer rules, th that defines the rules of the game. Unfortunately, in a sense, we're in a position that says we are responding to a request for information. The issue for the developer is, we can say essentially no, but the issue is, does it or does it not mitigate, according to the rules of the proffers, does this mitigate the requirements? If they are providing the 17,489 per unit, by law, they are mitigating that impact. We're still overcrowded, though. <laughs> True. Uh, but is there a, and I'm, I know you're not a lawyer, Mr. Klein, but I'm just curious to know if there's a legal um, issue with us providing a statement to the planning office that said the board did not approve. Um, and s instead of providing, like if we did approve it, this, this particular statement, that would go to the planning office, but if it doesn't get approved by the board, is there any legal ramifications to us providing some sort of written notice that said we did not approve as a board this particular statement? I, I believe the answer would be the board would need to affirmatively approve some form of statement expressing an opinion as opposed to not having uh, in, in lieu of the statement here, we would I, would I would recommend that the board adopt some kind of a statement so that we have a statement uh, going forward to them expressing the opinion. The issue I would pot potentially have is that also then would need to be subject to uh, previously discussions with, were with uh, Division Council, Ms. McGowan, to ensure that that statement is in fact legal relative to the, the, the rezoning and proffer process. Okay, thank you. That's Mr. Delft. All right, thank you. Uh, question for Mr. Klein first. Is there any, possi any possibility that the student generation number could be increased to more accurately reflect the uh, number of townhouses? Because 34 students for 55 townhouses seems incredibly low. That reflects the current generation factors that we have for that area for those types of units. All right, cool. That doesn't mean it can't change, but that, that's the basis for what we're projecting. Seems like a very low generation factor. Uh, I would like to make an amendment and uh, give it to the clerk. Um, all right. Um, I, will, I will move the... <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll move the issue and then uh, come back around to an amendment then. All right, uh, so I'll move the Prince William County School Board approve the development impact statement for the Dominion Valley Country Club proffer amendment, adding 55 residential units to the original rezoning of 3,270 residential units. Madam Vice Chair, I'll second for discussion. Although we've already had discussion. <laughs> <laughs> that's your original motion. Is that? That's the main motion. That's, That's the, the main motion. motion. Now he wants to be recognized. Another okay. an amendment. All right. And I'd like Mr. Dosh. And then I'd like to offer an amendment. Um, and I gave this to the clerk. And I move that the letter be struck from uh, quo ori rezoning uh, to the end of the uh, letter under the section uh, school division comments. And in the first line of the section that says any, replace it with this. Uh, it would make the school division comments uh, read, 
School Division is not in support of this rezoning that increases student capacity at schools already uh, or in excess of 100% capacity. Can I see the motion? I can't read this. He's, he's inserting. Madam Chair. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, I know. I know. I want to make sure. I, can I read it? Can you read it? Did it get seconded? The letter be struck from um, Okay. You may want to read to her. She's typing it up. Um, can the clerk please read the uh, amendment? I uh, can, but I didn't understand it. Um, right, because it's <laughs> a point of order. I, I move um, that the letter be struck from of a rezoning to the end under school division comments in the first line of this section, replace any with this. Madam Vice Chair. Uh, hold on. You, your, your second. I'm not seconding it. His, his motion hasn't been seconded yet. Okay. Um, I have a point of order. Okay. This motion needs to be seconded and then we'll get to you for discussion. Who seconds? I, I seconded the first one. Okay. That's discussion? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think it's very clear that we are over capacity in these areas, and it would just uh, be amending the letter to make it very clear that uh, we do not support this rezoning because we are significantly over capacity in these areas, as already stated. Okay. Um, I, I, we want to get uh, to make sure this amendment is written correctly and that we follow procedure. So I would like for Ms. Tabak to um, talk about how we're going to make this amendment uh, be done in, in the parliamentary procedure. Uh, the evident intent of the amendment is to reach to the underlying proffer language. So it is, in effect, a an addition mm -hmm. to the pending main motion that instructs a particular change in the language of the proffer. The language of the proffer itself, or I should say the statement regarding the proffer, is attached to the detailed agenda. So the proposed amendment, although it would be added to the main motion approving this statement, in effect would instruct that, the, that it be altered that the, that the statement be altered uh, as directed in the amendment. We're up for discussion. Um, uh, you had your hand. I think you had to say. You can go ahead and have, have your. Okay. So are we discussing the amendment or the, or the original motion? The amendment, okay. We're discussing, we're discussing the amendment. Okay, um, well I appreciate the intent of the amendment. I don't, I don't think it's necessary um, for the simple reason that I, I was gonna vote for the, I was going to vote to send the letter anyway because I think it's important for us to officially notify the, to officially notify the planning commission that the re request did not improve proffers. That said, um, as, the, as the Brentsville representative who has communicated with my counterparts many times on, on these issues and has been working with this over the years. I will be engaging my, my planning commission and my board of county supervisor counterparts directly encourage them that I think it's a bad idea and to vote no. That said, I can support sending the letter with or without the amendment. So there, Thank I kind of snuck in my original. Ms. Williams? Answer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I first wanted to know who seconded uh, the, um, mo the amended motion. Gil seconded the main motion, uh, but not the amended one that Willie put forth. And secondly, um, I'm curious to know the- You did, did second the amendment. Oh, okay, I thought it was just the main motion. Um, and um, the, in addition to that, I'm curious to know as to whether or not this would be wise or prudent of us as a board to um, approve this amended motion or the amendment to the motion when all previous discussions on the uh, verbiage that we send to the county um, 
in this statement was done in closed session with a lawyer's approval. So I'm hesitant to change our language without having uh, it reviewed legally. And we've had several discussions um, to that effect. So I, I just, I don't want to see ourselves dig, uh, get ourselves in trouble or do anything that may um, not be legally correct um, when it comes to our language. So uh, I'm not sure how the rest of my board members feel about that, but um, Mr. Deutsch, you were the one that um, started that discussion prior to in closed session and, and had our original uh, language modified, which I was in agreement with. So I'm just a little confused as to why we're doing it in public session without having it reviewed. Is there any more discussion? Ms. Tattawai. Thank you, Mr. Jesse. Uh, Mr. Deutsch, I do appreciate the, the amendment you put forward, um, but I echo Ms. Williams' concerns too. Since this is a, needs to have a legal discussion, I think it would be wise, if we're going to change the language or consider having an alternative language, I think it would be wise if this is something we did in closed session, even though I greatly appreciate this and the effort. Um, I just don't think it's prudent for us to do it right now without having um, legal counsel also. Any more discussion? I think at this point, we'll take a vote on the amendment. All those in favor? I'm sorry. The amendment. I, and I'd like to just read. Yeah. The last sentence, the letter be struck from a rezoning to the, uh, to, the, to the end under school division comments. In first line of this section, replace any with this. Let me read that again. I had problems with it. Add it to this amendment. Add it to the original motion. The letter be struck from a rezoning from or a rezoning to the in under school division comments in the first line of this section, replace any with this. All those in favor, let's vote. The vote is one yes, six no, motion failed. We now need to, to vote on the original motion that the Prince William County School Board approve the development impact statement for Dominion Valley Country Club proffer amendment adding 55 residential units to the original rezoning of 3,270 residential units. Let's vote. The vote is five, I'm sorry, two yes, Trenum and Williams, five no, motion failed. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, could I suggest that maybe we uh, 
bring this up at the next closed session um, and work on wording that we could all be comfortable with. I'm sorry. Please. Could I, could I suggest that this be added to the next closed session agenda so we can work on wording that we could all be comfortable with? Gone in and closed session? Yes, yeah, next closed session meeting so we can develop wording that we'd be more comfortable with. Are, are we referring to the original amendment or? I'm not referring to my amendment in particular. I'm referring to this letter that probably something related to it needs to go over to the Planning Commission, but um, we should have wording that the board's comfortable with. I'm just asking that we readdress this at closed session at the next meeting. So you would like for it to be placed on the school board agenda for April 18th? Yeah, the closed, closed session, session agenda to review this then. I will make that, I'll, I will place it on the agenda. Thank you. Moving on to 1401. And this is the student representative matters. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. I hope that everyone had a wonderful and relaxing spring break. I will try to keep my comments short, sweet, and to the point tonight because I know that we have a very packed agenda. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate the board on approving the 2018 year-end spending agreement and the 2019 budget. I would especially like to commend the board for listening to student voices and adding more school social workers and counselors to the 2019 budget. I hope that this advancement will continue as Prince William County works to better our ratios even more and furthers efforts to support mental health initiatives in our schools. I would also like to let the board know that I have already received positive feedback from students about the 2018 year-end spending agreement. They are very happy to hear that the school board is allocating a portion of that funding to enhancing school security measures and feel as if it shows that the board truly does care about students and their concerns. Speaking of student safety, I have had the opportunity to have some fantastic conversations about the topic and learn a great amount of valuable information in the past few weeks. One such event that facilitated this dialogue was the Coles District Student Safety Panel, hosted at Colgan High School. This panel was composed of security and mental health professionals and policymakers, answering questions that parents had about school safety from these different perspectives. Two of the panelists were our very own Mr. Deutsch and Ms. Ralston. I was able to be a panelist myself at a different event last night hosted by the Activate Prince William group, also answering questions about student safety. I am thrilled to see this type of discussion happening in our community between students, parents, and staff. As we continue these conversations, I simply encourage all parties to move forward with as much compassion as possible, being sure to value the feelings and opinions of others even if we may disagree with them. These types of dialogues are already greatly increasing the amount of student involvement in Prince William County. I would like to take this time to mention the efforts of Stonewall Jackson High School's Pride Club. They work to promote student political involvement in their school by inviting Delegate Danica Rome to come and speak to them and answer questions from a panel of students. Increasing the level of student involvement in local politics is the very reason my position exists, and I am thrilled that these students have taken the initiative and are unafraid to become involved in the politics that form the world around them. Another opportunity for students hoping to increase political involvement and make their voices heard are the student town halls hosted in each magisterial district. Before winter break, the Coles District Town Hall was held at Hilton High School, and I was able to hear intimately about issues that mattered to the students that were there. Unfortunately, due to weather conditions, the Brentsville District Town Hall planned for before break did need to be postponed. It will now be on May 24th. Our next town hall is the Aquaquan District Town Hall at Woodbridge High School, April 19th at 6 p.m. I will be joined by Miss Jessie at this event, and I look forward to hearing what students have to say. We only have one town hall left for the year besides these two, and that is the Neapsco District Town Hall, which will be on May 15th. I am also very excited to hear from our candidates for the position for interim chairperson tonight. As we hear what each of them has to say, I encourage the board to view candidates without the lens of partisan politics, but instead of considering candidates as individuals and considering what you believe to be best for students. Also, to our candidates, good luck. Finally, I conclude my time tonight with this week's student spotlight. I have two spotlights this week, the first of which being the art students of Osborne High School. Currently, around 50 pieces done by student artists are on display in the Manassas Museum art exhibit called Impressions. Pieces are made out of all different mediums, including a fully functioning rocking chair made out of just cardboard, which sounds pretty impressive to me. We are so proud of our wonderfully fantastic artists, and I encourage everyone to go see the exhibit that will be open until April 12th. 
I would also like to spotlight Sahal Sharma, an eighth grader at Marcella Middle School. She is incredibly dedicated to her education and is currently taking Algebra 2 and 11th grade math while still in middle school. She is smart, pushes herself in everything that she does, has a strong work ethic, and I've been told, a killer sense of humor. You are doing amazing things, Sahal, and we are so proud of you. Administrators and staff, if you have any amazing students that you'd like to highlight, please send me an email. Thank you all for your time, and I hope to see you at the April 19th Town Hall. The alternates, are the alternates here this evening? Would they like to make... citizens comments I want to uh, I will call you by name and tonight we have it's going to be a long meeting tonight so we will enforce the uh, three-minute rules I just want to remind uh, citizens uh, how this works um, everyone that signed up in advance will have a chance to speak if you are still within the 30-minute window we will go forward with the remaining speakers at the door I will call the first 10 names and ask you to take a seat in the first row. You will have three minutes to speak and I will, you have three minutes to speak and I will keep the time. The light on the monitor will indicate your progress. The yellow light would, will signify that you should sum up your position. Red indicates your time is up and you should stop. Please use proper decorum, manners while at the podium. If you do not, you will be asked to step aside. Please give your name and address for the record. And another item we'd like to add tonight is to remind the topics that can be discussed during citizens' time. Citizen comment time and public meetings are intended to allow the community to address the school board regarding topics or subjects which relate to the overall operation of the school division and are of public concern to the school school community. Therefore, during the period reserved for citizen participation meetings, the Prince William County School Board shall not hear public comments or complaints regarding individual students, student, discipl student disciplinary matters that are the subject of due process proceedings, matters involving individual employees who are subject of grievance proceeding or administrative hearing, nor matters involving or pending or probable litigation. I will call your name. Please come forward. Grace Houston. Marjorie Churchborn. Brandy Provenzi. I'm sorry. Provenzi. Help me with this name. Provinciano, okay. Provinciano, thank you. Mr. Wilk, I think you know this name. You, you give me a help with that. Uh, Rachel Ellis, Simon King, Christy Hubbard, Susan Etheridge, Cindy Gray, James Phil, James Phil, Jamie Filbert, Jalen Wyatt, and this group from Woodbridge High School, um, which is Christy Wyatt, also Coach Gary Wortham, and Reuben Allen. And I think this will end our first group. Other groups will be heard at the end of the meeting. So our first, Ms. Houston. Ms. Houston. Marjorie Churchborn. Okay. All right, well, good evening. Thank you all so very much for inviting us to join you. Ms. Kristen Campolango, American Heart Association's VP, has joined me this evening as well, and we have a wonderful announcement to share with all of you. As I always introduce myself to the kids at our schools, my name is Marjorie Churchborn, and I am the luckiest person in the whole world because I get to be your school's heart partner with the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association. I get to partner with your teachers, administrators, staff, and students to help raise awareness and life-saving donations with our wonderful annual 
annual community service events, such as Jump and Hoops for Heart. I'm so truly grateful to partner with the schools that host our events. This cause is very near and dear to me personally, as a few years ago, just a few days after Christmas, I lost my dad to a sudden heart attack and my mom just a few hours later to a stroke that same day. They were not only my parents, they were my best friends and my heroes. Representing American Heart within our amazing schools is an honor, and knowing that these annual events are helping to save lives and raise donations to help in prevention and treatment, to know that together we are helping to keep the hearts of our loved ones healthy and with us longer, it's an amazing feeling. Every county I visit is special to me, but tonight is particularly special as I have an awesome announcement to make about Prince William County. There are approximately 117 districts in Virginia that partner with American Heart with our school programs. Out of those 117 districts, Prince William County is number one in the state of Virginia for helping us fight heart disease. There are uh, out of those, excuse me, there are approximately 1,200 school districts nationwide. Prince William County is number 16 in the entire nation for partnering with us to fight heart disease last year. Why is it so important? Why is it so important to partner with schools? Because heart disease may be our nation's number one cause of death, but it can also be 80% preventable due to lifestyle choices. Education is the key. Your physical educators, school nurses, staff, administrators all understand this, and they're helping to make huge differences every year. Our programs provide heart healthy educational resources, education plans, physical education equipment, and all of those to our partner schools. Last year, Prince William County received $10,000 in physical education equipment from American Heart Association due to these partnerships. And it was also our pleasure to provide the elementary and middle schools with CPR training kits this year as a thank you for all you do to help us save lives. So I would like to ask a few of these amazing county leaders to please join us. I hope they will come up front for a photo with your award. Miss Emily Utter, Miss Beth Tominak, Mr. Fred Milbert. Their support um, of their school and staff is extraordinary and their passion for promoting heart health is what makes all of the difference. Because of their help, Prince William County is on its way to becoming the number one county in the nation for helping to fight heart disease. You are truly a district with heart. I wish I had time to recognize and list every school who partners with us, but these teachers and administrators are all heart heroes to so many of us. The top three event coordinators from last year, Miss. Liz Walsh from Marshall, Marshall Elementary, supported by Kathy Boyle, Miss Daldrup, and Miss Qualderbaum. Mr. Corey Love from Springwoods Elementary, supported by Miss Chris Rodzevec and Miss Janine Maynor and Mr. Burton. And number one in Prince William County last year, Miss Trish Gimento from Rosa Parks Elementary, supported by Mrs. Audrey Boron and administrators, Miss Sue Danielson and Mr. Terillion. I would love for any and all of you who helped reach this extraordinary achievement to join us on stage for a picture of your award and Dr. Waltz, if you would as well, as none of this would be possible without this, your support and that of the school board of our annual programs and your remarkable Prince William staff. To everybody here who supports these school and leaders in these programs, you are all a part of this award and personal here is to me and my family as well. So from my heart to yours, thank you and congratulations. <laughs> Take that, Fairfax. <laughs> Everybody here going to be in the picture? Let's just line up over this way with your backs to the board. Little people in front. Little people in front, right? Okay, all, all of you, look at this way, please. Everybody. everybody here? Not quite. I'm a little okay. bit higher. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I can't be that high. Okay, if you can't see us, we can't see you. bigger than me. 
I think you can do it. I don't know. Your parents aren't that tall. Our next speaker is Brandy Provenzano. Provincio. Provenzano. Thank you very much. Good evening, school board members. My name is Brandy Provenzano, and my address is on file. For those of you here tonight who are new to this, new language was literally just added to this board meeting tonight in order to shut down the voices of teachers and parents coming forward with their concerns. I had no idea that would happen, but it leads perfectly into the second part of my speech. What has become clear during this entire process with Reagan is that Prince William County teachers and staff members are afraid of Prince William County leadership. Let me say that again. Prince William County teachers and staff members are afraid of Prince William County leadership. They fear retaliation and they fear losing their jobs. When they finally gather the courage to reach out, they are immediately shut down by these board members and the administrators in the room tonight. The stream, the stream of teacher complaints are only symptoms of a much larger and more pervasive illness plaguing Prince William County. I can wait, thank you. This illness is a culture of bullying and harassment of both teachers and parents who attempt to call on the leadership team for help. Parents elect school board members and hold the school board members hold leadership accountable. If leadership is failing the teachers and the parents, the school board is also failing the teachers and the parents. It is time for actions supporting our teachers and parents, not more empty campaign promises. We all know that board members love and support their teachers during the election year, but do you show that same love and support to them when they need you the most? Prince William County teachers, parents, residents, and prospective teachers are watching and waiting for a statement of support and genuine action taken by this board in an attempt to show us that you are not indeed trying to silence us. Sadly, what happened before the board meeting started tonight only shows what we suspected all along. Thank you. Um, I think we need to have the parliamentary clarify this because there are several items. Please turn it. Thank you. We want to make sure we clarify this because this board will not shut down anyone from speaking. But there are legal concerns that we want to make sure we're clear. And some really did not relate to you guys at all. Uh, so I'm asking the parliamentarian to clarify. Thank you. The relevant policy uh, or regulation 133.1 was originally adopted August 13th, 2014, and has not apparently been amended since then. Uh, it refers specifically to public comments or complaints regarding individual students, student disciplinary matters that are the subjects of due process proceedings. Mm -hmm. matters involving individual employees who are the subject of grievance proceedings or administrative hearings, nor matters involving pending or probable litigation. It in no way restrains citizens from criticizing school board members or general comments uh, with regard to the policies of the school board. It's restricted to specifically referring to particular individual students or particular student disciplinary matters that are the subject of due process hearings Mm -hmm. or matters that are specifically relating to pending or probable litigation. Thank you. I think it's important to note that uh, this is a public hearing, and there are times that people come onto the, to the podium, and there are legal considerations, and that's why that was read tonight. The next person to speak is Rachel Ellis.
Thank you. My name is Rachel Ellis, and my address is on record with the clerk. Um, because of what was said, I'm a little bit, I had something written, and I'm slightly hesitant to read it, so I, I'm going to kind of throw that aside and basically tell you guys who I am. And I'm a... You may go ahead and read your statement. If there's something that we that relates to this particular policy... You'll let me we'll, know. Yeah, of course I will. Thank you. Um, this is my fourth year as a parent of a student at Reagan Middle School. I have been advocating for an external investigation into the allegations against the administration at that school. Because of my part in this desire to expose the truth, I was served with a letter, a letter from Ms. Turner's attorney. My immediate feeling was one of intimidation, and I do have an ongoing concern of how this could affect my current student at Reagan. But for these Reagan teachers, this intimidation is their daily reality. I'm, I'm going to stop just to say, please don't mention the name. Okay. Okay, thank you. But I did receive an attorney letter from her attorney. So it's litigation. Okay. okay. As so a you want to be careful about that yourself also. Okay. okay, thank you. As a resident of this county, it is baffling to me that this type of hostile environment under this administrator has been allowed throughout three different schools, and the superintendent's office has done nothing to prevent it or address it other than move her to different schools. It is also unacceptable as a parent that this situation at Reagan has still yet to be resolved. Tonight, I will be reading excerpts from two teachers who were under her administration at Potomac Middle. This is from the first teacher. I worked at Potomac Middle for two years under this administrator. I was hired among three, 30 other teachers to start that year, her second year. That should have been a big red flag. Discipline was non-existent, students fought all the time, teachers were told to assign their own detentions, and any referrals to the office were often returned with post-it notes saying, handle this in class. Basically, teachers had to punish themselves with longer hours or no lunch break in order to discipline students. Teachers were expected to stay in the cafeteria during lunch to monitor students, a duty usually assigned to admin, and also illegal per county guidelines about teacher breaks. The work environment was so stressful that I gained over 30 pounds in three months, cried almost every day. When I got home, I applied for all sorts of jobs in different, at different schools and outside of teaching because I was so desperate to get out of this school. I'm going to go ahead and go to my a second letter from a second teacher at, at Potomac Middle. I believe that her superiors have known for years what was happening, as I personally know several teachers that attempted, attempted to report her in order to get help and support when they were being treated unfairly by her. There are many other instances where I believe she bullied, intimidated, mocked, humiliated, and tried to embarrass and shame teachers into silence and compliance. She was often hostile towards staff in her interactions. In my opinion and observations, her aggressive, angry comments and actions were just as likely to be directed toward a secretary, the school nurse, the librarian, a custodian, a teacher, or a fellow administrator. I am now retired. I had a very successful 15-year career in Prince William County. I left Potomac Middle feeling discouraged, sad, and anxious about continuing to work in the classroom. I've never worked anywhere with such a negative clim climate and low morale as there was at this school. She was destructive. Thank you. Simon King. My name is Dr. Simon X. King. My home address is 2545 Port Potomac Avenue, Woodbridge, Virginia, about two miles from Potomac Middle School where I've resided since 2002. My purpose in being here tonight is to add an administrator's voice to the many teacher voices that have been crying out for support and protection against workplace bullying at the hands of the principal. Even though others have, been, have recently received a threatening letter, as well as myself, we are standing together to make sure the squeaky will of justice will not be silenced. As you can see, I'm a black male and I served as assistant principal at Potomac Middle School. These factors are being pointed out to emphasize that the accusations of bullying at Coles Elementary, Potomac Middle School, and Reagan Middle School are not limited to race, gender, teachers, or parents. 
Under the principal charge, everybody was subject to her negligent and irresponsible behavior as a person in a leadership position. I am also before you tonight to represent the many victims who still work in Prince William County Schools and are afraid to speak out due to fear of retaliation. In the 2012-13 school year, when I served as assistant principal at Potomac Middle School, I often witnessed the principal publicly embarrass and intimidate adults on staff. Most did not oppose her due to their uh, fear of retaliation and her abuse of authority continued. Here are my documented facts, which include documents created by that principal that I've, gave, I've given to you. And when she did not agree with my written observation of a teacher, she called an admin meeting in her office where she verbally reprimanded me, reprimanded me in the presence of a first year assistant principal. She accused me of lacking loyalty and threatened to demote me as the senior ranking assistant principal. After being humiliated in the presence of the first year assistant principal, I met in person with the associate superintendent of human resources to express my concerns about how the principal treated employees of Potomac Middle School. I also reported the matter to the former associate superintendent of middle schools who has retired. Because of the overwhelming social emotional impact, I was successful in attaining leave through the Federal Family Medical Leave Act. Upon my return from leave, the retaliation from the principal uh, attempted to violate medical leave law by changing my responsibilities for the worse and adding more duties, reducing my, re my leadership role and limiting my time and movement within the school. This is documented in this five page document she provided on April 23rd, 2013 in the presence of the retired central administrator in a quote unquote transition meeting prior to my return to work. Before my leave, before my leave, I was first in command in the absence of the principal. After returning from protected medical leave, I was demoted to second in command behind the first year AP. Before my leave, I had unlimited Doc, access. Dr. King, you're gonna have to wrap it up a little bit here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, two sentences. Before my leave, I was in first in command in the absence of the principal. After returning from protected medical leave, I was demoted. Uh, I had once had unlimited access to the building, even though I lived less than two miles away and was designated the emergency first responder administrator uh, for, for the prior six years. Um, after returning from medical leave, I was directed not to enter the building prior to 7.30, and I must leave the building no later than 5.30 p.m., and I was also given extra duties that I didn't have prior to, to my leave. All the information is in the packet. Thank you, Dr. King. <laughs> Mrs. Hubbard. Christian Hubbard, okay. Susan Etheridge. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Kristen Hubbard and my address is on file with the clerk. I'm speaking this evening on behalf of our son and all the parents and children and in support of all the teachers at Ronald Reagan Middle School. Our son is 14 and was diagnosed with autism when he was three. He attended, attended Ronald Reagan Middle School from 2015 to 2017, and for the first time ever, he loved school. Due to the fact that he has autism, he had the typical struggles that come along with it. He was in the autism program and had wonderful teachers. However, I started to notice on multiple occasions during IEP meetings that I would ask the teacher a question, and they would turn and look at the administration as if they weren't allowed to speak. I thought it was very odd and started seeing it more and more as the year went on. I wondered why everything uh, seemed as though it had to be approved by the administration as opposed to the teacher who knew our son and spent all day with him. Why weren't the teachers able to help him more? Uh, in addition, our son was suspended on numerous occasions because he would have a meltdown and it was considered a disturbance. Despite us telling the administration that this would not have the impact they wanted on him because this kind of punishment was not going to make sense in his mind, they ignored us. 
We appealed one of the suspensions and the administration quickly turned it down and in the report of the incident, perhaps the only interaction that the administration had had with our son was extremely misleading of the events that took place. I questioned the administration and I have the email to prove that it was embellished, that the account was embellished of what happened. During the middle of our son's seventh grade year, we were blindsided at the end of a very long IEP meeting with the news that they thought we should have our son switch schools. We were adamant and said absolutely not. There was no way it would have been a good scenario for him. We could not wrap our minds around the fact that they were even presenting this to us. We firmly believe the control that the administration had over the teachers directly affected our family and has affected many others with similar situations. Our son has not done better in a different school. He has regressed and he has no friends. To hear him talk about it is heartbreaking and we regret every day the choice we made. He never should have had to leave. We were made to think that this was the only option for him. It's a shame that this happened and that our precious boy is the one who has to reap the consequences of the administrators controlling and unethical decisions. This year has been incredibly stressful for him and it breaks our hearts. And as Mrs. Satterway reminded us at the beginning of this meeting, a child is more than their diagnosis. They have individual needs because of their diagnosis. And our autistic son is more than his autistic diagnosis. He has individual needs. Those needs were not meant due to the poor leadership of this administration. How many people, how many teachers, how many students, how many parents is it going to take for at least one of you to stand up and do what's right? We're not going to back down. We're not going anywhere. And when it comes to speaking out for my son, I will absolutely never be silent. Cindy Gray. I'm Cindy Gray and my address is on file. I do feel that your words prior to citizen comments was actually a perfect example of the board just not open to hearing the parents and the teachers' needs. But I'm here to read a portion of letters from both a parent and a teacher who have had serious and negative um, effects from administration in their schools. The first letter is from a parent of, uh, I won't say the name, the parent um, of a child who was um, in the SPED program at Ronald Reagan Middle School. This is their letter. To say the least, his sixth grade year was nothing but utter chaos for me I lo and a lost time for him. I was getting calls from teachers about work habits and grades. I called administration multiple times to discuss this without a return call. I went to the school twice and finally on the second visit, after waiting two hours, the administration came out to see me. At the end of the meeting, she told me that um, she would look into the matter and call me. She never called and never returned my calls. The chaos continued. The next year, I was called for a meeting with Mrs. Turner and all my son's, te oh, sorry, and all my son's teachers. During this IEP, not one teacher spoke or looked at me. Their heads were down and nothing was accomplished. The next letter is from another teacher from Coles Elementary under this administrator. She targeted me for two reasons. One, she felt I challenged her in the SPED eligibility decisions, and two, I supported a teacher that was being bullied by her. In special education eligibility meetings, this administrator told everyone ahead of time what she wanted the outcome to be. It wasn't up for discussion. If someone had differing opinions, they were to keep quiet. If she was... Uh, with this administrator, there was no team. There was only her, and her decision was final. When I, was, um, when I said that I disagreed to her, I was being insubordinate. When you had a problem with her, you knew it. She made my life miserable for the next year and a half. One day, she called me and the other teacher, whom I shared a classroom with, for a meeting and was just blasting that teacher. She basically was tearing her apart in front of me. I was so uncomfortable, and what she was saying was false. After speaking up, she then blasted me. That entire year, I had stomach pains and diarrhea every morning. Um, she started seeing a therapist, and I was miserable. 
In a year and a half, after 20 years of a spotless record, I had two letters in my file and an improvement plan for professionalism. I resigned at the end of the year. Board members, these are just two examples of the plethora of accounts that have been shared with us advocates for these teachers and these kids. You have heard these similar complaints of abuse of powers and, and bullying over and over again, and no support, no acknowledgement, and no action. I say to you, board members, that this is unacceptable, unconscionable, unlawful, immoral, and unethical. What is your action plan? Susan Eckert. Hello, my name is Susan Etheridge and my address is on file and I'm a former Potomac Middle School teacher. And I wrote a long speech out for you tonight and as I'm sitting here listening to everybody speak, I have a couple words that keep going through my mind, little three letter words like why, why, why is it taking 12, 13 years to remedy this problem? Why are we pretending like it it didn't exist, like we just now learned about it, when we know that we've known about it for a very long time, and many people have suffered for many years because of this. Um, other questions, um, who should we go to to get this bullying, intimidation to practices stopped? Who, who has known about what has been going on in this county for years, who? Who's, who knows about this? A lot of people know about this. Why can't we stop it? Why is it so hard to stop? Why hasn't anyone, um, no answers. I mean, there's a lot of questions, but we never get any answers. Um, I gave you a three page letter that I wrote to um, Dr. Waltz. I was just wondering if any of you read it. And nobody contacted, nobody, nobody was interested in uh, um, knowing any more about it because What's in that paper is not the whole story. There's a lot more to it. And I was just wondering, I'm, I'm, I'm retired now. I, I can actually sit down and talk with people. Um, my big question too is why are all the Coles and Potomac teachers so afraid to come forward and tell their stories? Why, why, why is that? The only people that come forward to tell stories are the people that are retired or no longer working or living in the county. We're the only ones that want to come forward. Why? How do we produce that kind of fear? Who's producing that kind of fear? Where is it coming from? Those are good questions that I would love to hear the answers to. Begging the question, who can we trust? Who can we trust in this county? The teachers don't feel like we can trust our, our supervisors, the people that are on the board. We, we've, we've lost trust. So, I'm begging you to give, give some of our trust back to the teachers deserve it. They work so hard in this county and it, it hurts when I think about what the Reagan teachers are going through. I saw some of them here last time and I looked at their faces and I saw us at Potomac years ago. I saw the same beaten down look, the same sad, distraught people and it, it hurt to look at their faces. And, and yeah, I'm happy I didn't have to live through it but one year, but things have to come to an end. The bullying, intimidation in this county has got to stop. Thank you. Jane, Jamie Filbert. Hello, I'm not Jamie Filbert. I am Trisha Gunther, and she signed up for me because mine wouldn't go through. Is that okay? She's here I'm, tonight. I'm sorry, yours didn't go through? I tried to send it to the clerk of the court, and it wasn't going through, so she sent one to get me on the agenda. I, I need to get from the clerk. She's here, Jamie. I, I, could you address this? Because you can't speak for her or in someone else's position. She, Jamie Filbert, contacted me, Mrs. Jesse, to speak, not this lady at the podium. This is the letter you can start reading. This is written on the 
Can I speak for her? Um, yeah. To the clerk, please turn the timer off. Okay. All right. Um, Are you Jamie Philbert? Yes, I am. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say, so I'm just going to read this. I'm reading for a, a um, teacher who's no longer in the state, but she used to work at Coles, Coles Elementary with me. And her name's Connie Thompson, and this is her letter that I'm reading for her. Uh, it says that she, uh, nearly 10 years ago, she interviewed with Ms. Turner and was hired at Coles Elementary. And the first, year, first week of school flew by, and though she was exhausted, she was also happy. Um, a few weeks later, the administrator called her into the office, and the conversation was related to the items that she had requested for her classroom. Being a new teacher, she did not have an idea on how purchasing and budgeting worked, nor how site-based management worked within the county. Instead of guiding, instead of being guided through the new, new excuse me, the new procedure, the administrator kind, unkindly made it clear that she was the boss. Gifted education department did not make decisions, and the teacher was not to go for them for anything she needed, and that the administrator. Um, would give her a formal reprimand in her work file if she were to go to gifted department. Um, I wish I could say that this was the last conversation that I had with her that carried a warning of retaliation if her expectations were not obeyed. Throughout her two years at Coles, the administrator would regularly belittle and berate her in front of her students to the point she was in tears and panic. Many of her former students are now in college and have reached out to maintain contact with her. They've shared with her that they still remember the incidents with the administrator. During one of the times the administrator had her in the office, um, the teacher was told that she was uncooperative and, a and that she should give up since she would not last in, the prof in this profession of teaching. Um, the meeting was not the only instance where the administrator made derogatory comments about her character and personality. She would also mention it outside her office walls. When she suffered an 104 degree fever, the administrator told her she was faking being ill. The final straw was when she was sent to the hill for a nearly entire week of school and not told why she was not allowed at Coles Elementary. She now teaches in her home state and she's found a place where she's supported, valued, trusted, and has been able to grow exponentially in her ability to do her job well. She's so thankful she did not leave the educational field based on her experience at Coles. There are many talented educators, however, whose experiences with its administrator have soured them on the profession forever. The county has failed these educators by not acting upon the calls for help received through the proper protocols over the years. It's truly a shame that it had to become a public outcry in order for the county to take notice. I urge you, the members of Prince William County School Board, to fi finally listen to your teachers and establish a solution that puts the teachers and students first. They've spent 13 years being put second. It's time for a change. Thank you. <laughs> Jalen Wyatt. Good morning, board members. My name is Dylan Wyatt, and I'm a student at Woodbridge Senior High School. On behalf of the students and athletes at Woodbridge Senior High School, I would like to personally thank you. Or could you get a little bit closer to the mic? Thank you. All right. I would like to personally thank you for listening to our much needed renovation that will start to bring our school into the 21st century, which includes the following approved upgrades. Installing five new Wi-Fi access points to improve the technology for our, the staff and students. Installing individual urinals and taking out the trough at the stadium. Standing down the single gym floor that our students and athletes have access to. Selecting Woodbridge Senior High School to be the first outdated school to receive a new turf field, which will free up practice space for teams, band, general RTC, robotics, etc. So these groups do not have to practice until 11 p.m. at night or travel nine miles or more to other fields when there is inclement weather. My cohorts and I graciously appreciate all of these upcoming approved renovations, your dedication, commitment, and our academic excellence and the unseen things that you do for Prince William County School System. We are looking forward to your continued support of the additional renovations and funding not yet approved. For instance, musical funding, gym practice fields, field house, and a new 
specialty program to draw new students back to Wilbur Senior High School. Again, as a student, I would like to personally thank you for your support in boosting morale. Christy Wyatt. Good evening, board members. I come on behalf of the military families and the parents of Woodbridge Senior High School. I would like to personally thank you. We would like to personally thank you for all of the renovations you have proved us for. We would like to continue to work with you in the future on our future renovations that are needed. In light of some of the comments we've heard tonight, I want to thank the administration at Woodbridge Senior High School. I have been in four different states and six different school systems, and I would like to tell you that the administration at Woodbridge Senior High School is one of the best I've seen. And that includes the athletic staff as well. And I just want to personally thank them because we have gone through a lot in those different states and school systems. And I want to thank them and please continue to do good things and promote renovations at Woodbridge Senior High School. They deserve it. Coach Wortham. I'm supposed to be talking right now. All right, I see the clock is ticking. Just want to get my guys. This won't take a long time. Uh, to the board, Ms. Jesse and Dr. Waltz, my name is Gary Wortham Sr., and I am the head football coach at Woodbridge Senior High School. On behalf of me, my entire coaching staff, these fine young ladies and gentlemen that we have here tonight, our administration led by Ms. Heather Abney, our athletic department led by Mr. George Washington, all of Woodbridge High, High School student athletes, staff, student body, and finally, the parents who care. We are here to say thank you. We are here to say thank you to every one of you. You have showed your care. You, you have gotten involved in regards to the, the things that are necessary for our school, and we are, we are here to say thank you. At Woodbridge High School, we take pride in all of our student athletes, where our focus for our entire program is on leadership, character, and integrity. With our facility gaining the, this greatness of change with the elevation of turf, our student athletes will now be able to absorb even more of the excellence and success they strive for, and now on an even and safe playing surface. The gears are following a detailed maintenance service plan from the company that installed the Bermuda Grass Game Day Inc. has lasted as long as it could. As we take pride in providing a world-class division, this gain is the best offer for the safety to all the student athletes and students at Woodbridge Senior High School. We are very thankful and grateful to all of you for making this happen. Show the love. Mr. Adams. Uh, good evening, school board members and Dr. Waltz. My name is Ruben Adams, and my address is on file with the clerk. I especially want to point out Ms. Jesse, Ms. Williams, and even in his absence, Mr. Stewart, as you all came to, out to our school to see our conditions, and you saw exactly why we are in dire need of your assistance. On behalf of not only the football team, but the entire Woodbridge High School community, what we call our Viking Village, 
I thank you for approving the turf field for athletes st athletic stadium, as well as the other upgrades that will occur to the concession stand and especially the bathrooms at the stadium. The stadium is used by much more than football. We also have soccer, track and field, lacrosse, and field hockey that use the stadium all year around for training games. Not to mention the band, ROTC, and numerous school-related events that we have, especially graduation. We are one of the few Prince William County schools to host our graduation on school grounds. Again, on behalf of Woodbridge High School, I thank you. I'm not sure when it will happen, but I can't wait to see you all at our ribbon cutting ceremony when we break ground. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna break protocol a little bit just to say thank you for being in this boardroom and representing the students in this county. Um, you know, we've got great kids and we've seen in the last couple of weeks the power of students and what they do. So I am so uh, just elated to see you in the, in the boardroom. And I noticed that you changed your shirts. They were white before and now they're black now, but you guys are looking good. Ladies, you're looking great. And Mr. Wortham, I, I tell you something, you are some type of coach. And what you do for these kids is just wonderful. And to Ms. Your principal is not here, uh, Ms. Abney. Uh, I will just say that every time I come to Woodbridge High School, a student greets me, and there's always a student in the office. You are a very child-centered school. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walsh. Thank you. Thank you. Go Woodbridge. Ms. Williams. We're moving on to the public hearing on the interim chairman appointment to the Prince William County School Board. In terms of the citizens' comment, you know, the, I think I announced it earlier that we will, uh, at the end of the meeting, near the end of the meeting, there will be an opportunity for those who uh, remain. During this agenda, the citizens are asked to, res to relate to the hearing about becoming an interim chair, the ch interim chairman appointment. Interim chairman, Chair of candidates who will speak first are asked to observe a maximum of five minute time limit when addressing the board. In accordance with school board policy 133, citizens speaking on behalf of candidates are asked to observe the maximum three minute time limit when addressing the board. We will start with the appointees. Our first candidate is Lucy Beecham. Ms. Beecham. Madam Vice Chairman, members of the school board, and Dr. Waltz, I am Lucy S. Beecham, and have offered myself to be the interim school board chairman. You don't have to wonder what you'd get in appointing me. My leadership skills are known, as is my ability to run meetings efficiently and fairly, utilizing all of Robert's rules of order. I served on this board for 16 years, 14 as its chairman. Before every decision of the school board, I would ask myself, is this decision in the best interest of the students of this school division, 
or is this decision in the best interest of our employees? This would continue if you appoint me. The one vote I have regretted while on this board took place in the mid-1900s. At that time, the relationship between the school board and the Board of County Supervisors was contentious at best. The funding was denied for needed items such as school buses and a tow truck. And that year, I had to vote to increase the high school class size by one half of a student in every class in order to balance that budget. This vote has stayed with me for years. I would like to work with you in reducing that class size ratio immediately. I worked with my fellow board members after that to forge a positive and working relationship between the school board and the Board of County Supervisors, regardless of party. I hold those relationships valuable to the improvement of our schools. I believe politics have no place in our school division, nor in any school board decision. I always tried to be fair to my fellow board members and transparent to the public, the taxpayers. I am a collaborator and want to work with each one of you to get back on track and work for our students. I've heard some really great ideas for this school division from many of you, and I would like to help support you in getting those ideas accomplished. Education has always been my passion, and believe me, Prince William County Public Schools hold a very special place in my heart. Since leaving the school board, I've remained active in the schools, sometimes as a PTO volunteer. I'm not going to say wrapping Christmas presents in the holiday hot thing was one of my skills. However, I did volunteer. Sometimes as a weekly classroom volunteer in one of my grandchildren's classes, and many times as a reader for National Young Readers Day. For 10 years, I have served on the board of directors of the Career and Technical Education Foundation of this school division, serving as its president these last five years. I believe strongly in early childhood education as well, and have been involved with Smart Beginnings, advocating for initiatives for our younger children, including preschool, for over eight years. Other community involvement includes being chairman of the Prince William Chamber of Commerce, serving on the, as the board of directors of the Prince William Convention and Visitors Bureau, or Discover Prince William, from 2009 to 2016, serving as its chairman my last three years, as well as the development committee for the Hilton Performing Arts Center. Prince William County is my home, and I love it. Next fall, all four of my grandchildren will be in Prince William County Schools, some at each level. I would bring to this position proven leadership, budget experience, policy knowledge, and a desire to hit the ground running. There would be no transition period. I stand ready to work with you to help provide a world-class education that our children deserve. It would be my honor to be named as the interim school board chairman. I would like to thank you for your time tonight and for all the essential work you do to protect and educate our youngest citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beecher. Christy Black. Hello. My name is Christy Black. I'd like to take this time to thank you um, and address the school board, Superintendent Waltz, and the community regarding the position of interim school board chair. I would also like to wholeheartedly thank the other 19 candidates who came forward to express interest in this position. I'm honored to be part of this unbelievably large group of amazing people who are ready and willing to serve their community. For the past five years, I've owned and operated a home-based custom bakery called Effie Claire Bake Shop. I started the business as a means to give back to my community through fundraisers, partnerships with nonprofit organizations, and random acts of kindness. While it was extremely gratifying, six months ago, I chose to close down the operation of my business in order to focus my energy full-time on what I'm most passionate about, 
working with community leaders and organizations in the hopes of making our community a better place for everyone. My goal as interim school board chair would solely be to aid the school board in this time of transition until a new chair is selected by the citizens of Prince William County in November. There are many qualified candidates here with me tonight. What I can offer is my perspective as a parent of four school-aged children, all of whom are students within Prince William County Public Schools. As a military family, we have moved frequently, and my children have attended a wide range of schools in four states over the past 13 years. We have experienced schools that are well-funded and have all the latest technology, Title I schools, schools with almost zero diversity, schools with students from all over the world, schools with predominantly well-educated middle-class families, and schools with majority of low-income families, and schools so poorly funded that there were 40 elementary students per classroom and the PTO had to fundraise in order to pay for PE, music, and art teachers. I've witnessed dramatic differences within school districts and how a school district can change drastically due to its leadership. I have volunteered in every school district my children have been, enro been enrolled in. I have worked with parent-teacher organizations, volunteered in classrooms, and worked with teachers and office staff. I understand how important it is, leadership is in determining the success of schools and overcoming obstacles. My vision of this school board is one that supports the students and teachers, builds positive relationships with the community, and focuses on ensuring equity among the schools in the district. I believe we must work together to ensure that we are providing the best possible education and educational setting for our students. Our school board should reflect that ideal and set the example for our community as we set aside our differences and political beliefs to work cohesively for the sake of our students. Our students should always be our number one priority as our mission is to provide them with the best education possible, the world-class education we promise. In order to do this, we have to ensure that we are meeting the needs of all of our students and providing them with the resources they need to be successful. The students in our district are very diverse and come from a wide range of backgrounds, experiences, and learning needs. My hope is that we never lose sight of this as we prepare them for their future and to be productive members of society. The people invested in our educational system should have a voice, including students, teachers, parents, and the general community. I am extremely impressed with the student representatives on the board, and I'm happy they will continue to have representation in the future. Aside pr from providing important feedback, from students, it serves to inspire our students to get involved in civic engagement and serving the community. I personally can't think of a more valuable learning opportunity. My priorities for the school district in the future are ensuring students and teachers feel safe in school, reducing the amount of standardized testing required for our students, increasing teacher pay to be competitive with our surrounding districts, allocating funding to repair schools and bring technology up to date with newer schools, and ensuring that teachers have the necessary resources and time to work with students and provide them with individual learning opportunities to match their educational needs. This school board represents the students, parents, and citizens of Prince William County. The investments we make in our students today will directly impact the future success of our county and state in the future. As our education system impacts everyone in our community, I believe it is the importance of representation and the community having a voice. As interim school board chair, I would make it my responsibility to listen to parents and educators and speak on their behalf. I hope to have the opportunity to serve this community for the, for the next six months as your interim chair as we work toward building a stronger, more unified school board. Regardless of who you choose as interim chair, I am excited for this new chapter in our school board and look forward to the progress we will make in improving our schools and educational opportunities. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Black. Sean Brand. Good evening, Superintendent Waltz, Acting Chair of Mrs. Jesse, and members of the Prince William County School Board. It's a pleasure to see you tonight, and it's a pleasure to stand before you with the opportunity to be considered for the interim chair position on the board. I was honored to be part of this board from September 2016 to October 2017. 
as the acting school board member from the Brittsville District. After my unanimous and bipartisan selection in the early morning hours of September 22nd, 2016. And I am also honored to be part of an incredible group of 20 people who are willing to take on this role. I do come to you tonight a little bit more scruffier than normal, and, and no, I haven't canceled my membership to the Dollar Shave Club. The reason for this facial hair is that it reminds me of my experience as a teacher in Prince William County Schools. During the regular school year at Woodbridge Senior High School, I normally taught English 10 and English 11. However, during the summers when I taught summer school, I often taught English 9. During those summers, I got the opportunity to teach in many other schools throughout the county as well, including Forest Park, Hilton, and Osborne Park, just to name a few. English 9 summer school students were an interesting mix. In many cases, most of those students, they fell behind in their classes. They dug themselves into a hole, and they couldn't figure out a way to dig themselves out. Summer school was a chance for redemption. So for five days a week, for six weeks, we often reread literature from the regular school year, To Kill a Mockingbird, Romeo and Juliet, and other classic pieces that were part of the ninth grade language arts curriculum. Mockingbird was one of my favorite books to teach. One of my former summer school students was named Charles. And so during the summer that I grew my first ever beard, I had Charles in my class. Charles thought it was humorous to call me Ranger Bran in honor of my beard. I assume he, assume, I assume he thought I looked like a park ranger, uh, because he must have assumed all park rangers had beers. I wasn't really sure. Anyway, Charles had a great sense of humor. Charles did well that summer, and he ended up in my English, 12, excuse me, English 10 classroom at Woodbridge the following school year. I lost touch with Charles for over a decade, but about five years ago, one of those small world moments, I bumped into Charles at my government work site. Now in his 20s, Charles was a member of the US Navy. We chatted for a few minutes, and I was impressed by the young man that Charles had become. He was confident. He was mature. Clearly, the military was a great option for Charles, who likely wasn't sure what the future held for him when he ended up in my English 9 summer school classroom rereading Mockingbird for the second time. There are many Charleses in Prince William County schools. We have the opportunity as a school board to make a difference in the lives of all the children who attend our schools. We can change the world through the education that we provide in Prince William County. It may not happen right away for many of the students, but we can light the spark to get our students headed in the right direction. My experience as a teacher in this system shaped the person that I am today, and it shaped the person who was blessed to serve this county for a year as an acting school board member. Education changed my life just as it did for many of the kids I had the pleasure to teach. Looking to the future, I do not plan to run for the school board chair position in November or the following November. However, I do have a vision on items that I would like to accomplish in this position in addition to much more. I want to talk to parents and students in this county whose voices and concerns should be heard. I want to visit schools throughout the county, including my former employee, employer, excuse me, Woodbridge Senior, where I spent an awesome seven years as a teacher, and I hope Ms. Jesse will join me. Go Vikings. I want to visit Leesylvania Elementary, Ms. Williams District, um, and I hope she joins me as well to see a couple of my former students in action as teachers in our school system. I'm so proud of them and some of my other former students for becoming teachers. And I look forward to talking with our school board representative on the, on the school board, which I helped make happen with my vote supporting the, such a position during my time as an acting school board member. I look forward to working with the seven members of this board again. We accomplished a lot together and we can do it again. I do not claim to be Atticus Finch, the nearly faultless champion of the underprivileged and to kill a mockingbird. Like most of the candidates here, I have strengths and I have weaknesses. But I promise to do my best over the next six months or more to be a calming presence on the board, to practice professionalism and not politics, and to help this board do the business that's required to make Prince William County Schools the best school system in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you again for the opportunity to be considered for this position. Thank you, Mr. Brand. Justin Carone, did I pronounce that correctly? It's close, it's Karen. Thank you. Good evening, uh, my name is Justin Karen. My family's called Prince William County home for almost 10 years. My wife, Monica, and I have three children at the elementary level in Prince William County School System. My son, who is on the autism spectrum, is in a private placement through the special education department. I firmly believe it would bring an unbiased, collaborative, and inclusive sense of focus to the role of interim chair 
of the Prince William County School Board. My academic, professional, and professional background denote a uniquely positioned set of capabilities focused in differing areas of expertise, including education, nonprofit associations, and a variety of for-profit industries. By way of background, I received my bachelor's degree from Old Dominion and my master's of business administration from George Mason. I'm currently the vice president and business strategist for a data analytics firm here in Washington, DC. However, for the previous 13 years, I was in the executive education space, identifying best practices in Fortune 500 industries, including manufacturing, uh, commercial design, and sales. It was both in identifying and disse disseminating those best practice solutions to some of the most pressing business challenges that face the Fortune 500 today. So during the 2016-2017 school year, I was appointed by Ms. Lily Jesse on SEAC, the Special Education Advisory Committee. And it's through that experience that I was able to connect with families in Prince William County and help them solve the challenges they were facing in the Special Education Department. And that's really my motivation for being here today. There, there's two purposes to SEAC generally. First is determining the needs of children with disabilities within, uh, within the county. And second is developing priorities and strategies for meeting those identified needs. In the 2017-2018 school year, my peers elected me chair of SEAC. In collaboration with our newly appointed director of special education, Dr. Michelle Roper, we designed the agenda for the year. And I found it appropriate to appoint three subcommittees within SEAC. The first was direct and specific partnership with the Parent Resource Center to both establish co-sponsored events with the PRC and SEAC, as well as co-branded communication materials for parents and students. And second was the evaluative possibility of launching a county-wide special education parent-teacher association. I'm very happy to report that as of last month, our vice chair, Ms. Celia Miles, was successful in launching that effort. And it is live today as we speak. And the third was a bit of an investigation, if you will, into more information on what's referred to as site-based management. I wanted to look at parent concerns brought to the attention of the Special Education Advisory Committee. And are they founded or, or rooted in site-based management, which was the feedback we were receiving. Not only what the definition of site-based management was, but the current state, the future state, and the root cause of all of those parent concerns. The recent audit of the Special Education Department, of which I was involved, uh, will recommend further improvements. However, it's incumbent upon this board to both budget for and mandate the execution of those improvements. I think we've heard many times in other counties that yes, we have that audit. That's on file. What I don't want to see is that audit being put on a shelf. With a population of approximately 12,000 students, improvement in special education presents a significant opportunity. I will say this, with Dr. Roper's appointment as the department director, we have experienced marked improvements in facilitating open conversation and dialogue among all stakeholders, uh, including parents and school staff. It's this type of change, along with that sense of accomplishment I mentioned earlier, associated with helping Prince William County families successfully solve the challenges they face with the school system that drives my motivation to participate in SEAC and subsequently come here and speak to you this evening. <clears throat> As the interim school board chair, um, I would look to solve as many challenges as possible in those six or seven months that would be allotted. Um, we can lay the foundation and provide the framework for the next elected chair and the future culture of the, uh, of the board. Uh, with, in, with this in mind, the board should take this opportunity, regardless of whom you select to be the interim chair, to review its strategic plan, sit down, and reevaluate both in the short term and the long term objectives and funding strategies in a dedicated session. We must deal directly with critical school system needs, such as improving student and teacher ratios in some of the most crowded classrooms in the Washington, D.C. region, addressing a less than competitive increase in teacher pay in the midst of statewide teacher shortages, increasing security in all of our schools due to recent events, improving student mental health, and of course, advancements in special education to enable a world class education for all of our students not just those who excel. Thank you. Thank you. Langston Carter. I'd like to say good evening to the community and the members of the board. 
and also to the uh, students watching at home who weren't able to come tonight because they were too focused on their schoolwork. I thank you for your support. Uh, my name is Langston Carter. I am a senior in high school and a former Woodbridge Senior High School student. And I know what you're all probably thinking. I'm too young to be seeking this position and I don't have the experience. However, I grew up in a home where both my parents were educators as well as all four of my grandparents. I was homeschooled until eighth grade because they knew the problems within the public school system and they made sure I, I understood those problems before I decided to attend public school. And while my time in public school was brief, it gave me a great understanding of the issues that impact us students. I'm gonna talk about three primary issues tonight that I think our school board could do a better job addressing. Uh, the first being inequality in our curricula. Prince William County Schools allows English teachers to choose what books are included in their curriculum. And in theory, that seems like a great idea. But in practice, it puts every student's education in danger. Teachers have biases, and if we allow teachers to choose their own books, books uh, their biases end up impacting our students' education. I spent two years in, an advan in advanced English classes, and the only piece of work I read by a black author was a poem by Langston Hughes. And that leads me to the uh, second issue, lack of diversity in our advanced classes. Even at our most diverse schools in our county, we lack that diversity in our advanced classes. This isn't just a problem in Prince William County, but can we really claim we are giving a world-class education if we're not working to solve this issue? These students are often impacted by economic disadvantage in a day and age where computers are an unquestionable part of our education. Minority students often do not have the same resources as their counterparts, and our schools should reflect that. We need to fund all our schools equally rather than providing Colgan with an overabundance of computers while Potomac High School is still using tech uh, textbooks from a decade ago. Additionally, we need to make sure ele from elementary school all students are offered equal opportunities. I should not have been the only student in my AP World History class, but patterns and expectations, the only black student, sorry, in my AP World History class, but patterns and expectations are set in early grades. The third issue I want to talk to you about is teacher support, or more accurately, lack thereof. For the past few decades, there has been a culture of bullying that our teachers have suffered. Certain administrators have repetitively targeted teachers, creating a hostile work environment. Our teachers cannot do their jobs if they are constantly being harassed by administration. I'm sorry, this may cost me the position or any chance I had at it, but the principal at Ronald Reagan Middle School is the problem. If you have dozens of teachers and parents coming to you saying she has bullied them, called them names, we have, a, I heard earlier we had a teacher who had to get therapy from this principal, that is a problem. She has been bounced from school to school to school because you know she is a problem and you're not willing to confront it. Our teachers cannot do their job if they are constantly being harassed by the administration, and, there is, and that is something we need to acknowledge and fix. Sorry, I'm gonna try to get back on point to uh, students. Under the leadership of our former school board chair, I have watched along with the entire community as our school board became more polarized and political, as our representatives squabbled amongst each other in trivial debates and arguments. It is time for us to stop acting like children and focus on the children. There are problems that students face on a daily basis that Prince William County Schools have failed to address, and it's time we change that. I'm here because I believe one of the largest problems in our school system, <clears throat> excuse me, in our school system is that students don't have a voice. Maybe there's a student representative sitting there with you, but as long as Ms. Arnold doesn't have a voice, as long as Ms. Arnold doesn't have a vote, students don't truly have a voice. I'm seeking this position to give students a voice, a vote, and proper representation. Thank you. Thank you. Doreen Dow 
Dower. Good evening, Vice Chairman Jesse, school board members, Dr. Waltz, and the Prince William community. My name is Dr. Doreen Dower, and I live at 4851 Stonehurst Drive, Woodbridge, parent of five children who have attended Prince William County Schools. I have placed my name in the running for interim temporary school board chair because I know that my background and experience would best qualify to lead us in this very challenging time. First, my doctorate in education and current Virginia certification as a school psychologist placed me in a leadership position with, with Prince William County Public Schools for 37 years before I retired last year. Now I have time to devote to another important job. I have received state and national recognition for Prince William County Schools, having shared our educational program successes at governor's and school board conference association meetings. As a central office administrator for 12 years, I supervised and evaluated attendance officers, comprehensive child study social workers, substance abuse prevention specialists, and other support staff. But my largest contributions, I feel, have been in the areas of bullying prevention, suicide prevention, and critical incident response. I coordinated and nurtured the peer training anti-bias program at high school and the no place for hate at middle school. I grew and refined the critical incident team to help our schools respond to many incidences of student suicide, teacher and student death, and school crises over 12 years and 20 years as a member of that team. My ability to collaborate with county and parent groups would be extremely helpful as I lead this temporary school board assignment. I have been a, an active part of the Prince William County Prevention Alliance, chaired, and was a member of the CSA FAPT East team for seven years, MCAP with the Prince William Police, and the School Health Advisory Board. Over my years as supervisors, I developed a good relationship with our court system, judges and probation offices to improve school attendance. Especially worthwhile was my membership with the HCHY Council, where I worked with community partners to foster the youth voice and encourage youth leadership through annual conferences over the years. As temporary chair, I would bring my experience with special education policy, eligibility, practices, grants management as a resource to the members of the board. I developed our Prince William County Schools peer mediation program at the middle school. Working with parents as a psychologist at Bevel 15 years, Fred Lynn seven years, I was able to relate to parents and bridge the gap between school and community. Also, I was a member of a school boundary committee, so I understand the specific challenges there. Another major role I assumed during my years in student services was the district's liaison for the McKinney-Vento Homeless Education Act and I worked to approve transportation to the school of origin to help transition for children who were experiencing lots of issues as they lived in shelters and temporary housing. I wrote grants to provide tutoring and services of a social worker for them and their parents. Substance abuse. During the days of the safe and drug-free school money, I wrote grants to staff to staff nine substance abuse prevention specialists. Then the money ran out. In the past couple of years, we've revived a prevention program. As, but especially now with this new Omnibus Funding Act, it is extremely important for our board to be led by someone who understands grants, has written federal grants, and would ensure that we put forth money for that. 
In conclusion, my total professional career has been dedicated to the children of Prince William County. I recognize that many social issues, mental health and safety concerns greatly impact education and we as a school board must listen and involve our children and their parents. The Prince William Strategic Plan targets a high world-class educational goals. I would Flowers. offer significant sorry, ex expertise up? in goal two to ensure the safety of our kids. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Victor Gaither. John Gray. Good evening. Uh, I'm John Gray. I've been a resident of Occoquan District for the last 30 years. Um, I think I see a different vision for the uh, interim school board chair uh, from what I've been hearing tonight. And I think that what I see as the interim school board chair is someone who will be there. They're going to be there for the, for the eight months, let's face facts. It's an interim period. I'm not, I would not come to the school board with an agenda to achieve certain goals. That's not gonna happen in eight months. It's tough enough for you seven members to get an agenda done in four years. In eight months, I just don't see that happening as the interim chair. My job as interim chair would be to make sure that the, and work with the seven other members of the board, okay, to uh, develop the agenda for the meeting and make sure the meeting is run uh, efficiently according to Robert's Rules of Order with Mr. Balk, okay, and, um, Keep order there, <laughs> okay? You've been through a rough two years. There's no question about that. Beyond that, I think the interim chair can best serve this board by being the public face of the school board, if it, by going before the Board of Supervisors, possibly, Chamber of Commerce, things along those lines, and say, folks, the school division, the, the, the cloud over the school is not falling down. Our schools are fine, our students are fine. We have a good school board who's got the skill set to meet the agenda and uh, solve the problems of the school board. And I firmly believe that. But I think that the interim can best serve the public, okay, by being the public cheerleader for the school board and the school division and the students. In addition to that, um, I've been a CPA for 41 years. 30 of, 38 of them self-employed and 30 of them in Prince William County. My joke is I live, work, and play in the Occoquan District. If I go north of the Occoquan River or west of the McCourt Building, I'm on out-of-town travel. My point is, is that I'm in the community on a regular basis, all right? On a daily basis, I hear what's going on. Uh, over the years as a CPA, I've developed a, uh, actually accidentally developed a reputation as a budget nerd. And that's not because of just being a CPA. It's just, if you wanna know what's going on, you follow the numbers, whether it's at the federal, the state, or the local level. Uh, I know the county budget. I've worked with uh, plenty of the boards of supervisors. I've worked with new supervisors in teaching them how to read the budget. Um, I've worked with some school board members on how to, I, I know the budget. About four or five years ago, the former county executive put out uh, the county government's version of uh, unmet critical needs, all right? It was very good work, all that, uh, it, it was a very good job, except there was one problem. There was a $1.35 billion, not million, billion dollar error. It was me who found it, okay? And it's, seriously, uh, because I looked at it, you know, I analyzed it, I studied it, and I said, wait, this isn't making sense. Did a couple of things, it was a $1.5 billion error. So my point is I look at the budget that tells me what's going on there uh, in that sense. So my point is, in summary, is that I'm not coming in with an agenda. The agenda is simply what you're looking for is for someone to be the caretaker for whoever the, the next permanent chair will be uh, when elected uh, in November, all right? So there's no agenda. I want to uh, work with the seven of you 
to meet what is your agendas, okay, and to do it in, in a manner that's efficient and uh, the public sees that everything's gonna be okay in the school division, and I mean that. My, if our four children went through all four school, uh, <laughs> excuse me, our four children went through uh, Prince William County Schools, Springwoods, uh, Lake Ridge, and Woodbridge High School. I was involved from uh, 1989 to uh, last child graduated in 2002 at those schools. Um, so I, I think I know what's going on, plus I have the, the pulse of the, uh, uh, the community. I think I could serve the board best in that sense by not having an agenda and um, I'm gonna close with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. John Cribbs. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, uh, Chairman, uh, Chairwoman, better suited there, uh, members of the board, Dr. Waltz, all the senior staff I see sitting over there, uh, parents, teachers, and everybody out in, that's watching this tonight, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is John Cribbs, and my uh, address is on record. Um, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I'm a proud uh, parent of uh, two boys here in this school district. Uh, when I introduce myself, I'm a father, a husband, retired military officer. Uh, we came back seven years ago, had the opportunity to live anywhere we wanted to in Virginia and Maryland. Uh, we were lucky enough, I would like to tell you that I was smart enough to choose Prince William County, but that's Mrs. Cribbs. Um, but overall, we're very happy here. This is one of those places where you see, and I look at, every time I look at that providing a world-class education, I really feel it for my boys. If I could sit here and say like, you know, that it takes a village to raise kids, and I'm very proud of my boys. I have to thank those teachers, those administrators, the staff, the people here in the Kelly Center, you folks that sit on this board. Uh, thank you very much. This, you know, this has been a family situation for us, and, and, and we've been blessed. I've, I've been able to serve 24 years in the military. I was able to live in nine different countries. I spent time in a military attache duty in six embassies. We lived in uh, four states here in the United States. Um, we got to see a lot of different schools from what you would say like upper class privilege. I mean, I saw one school in Cambodia that they had a horse stable for the kids there at the school. Of course, it cost $30,000 a year to send the kids there. But again, that was something that I got to see. I got to sit on different boards in the embassies. Uh, I actually got to negotiate for schools that we were providing money to to build in different countries. Uh, I've got to negotiate with folks. When you work in an embassy, you got people from all around the world that, that, and the country that your team you're working with that come from different states. They have different backgrounds. And we all have to try to get along and see what's best for the, the mission. Um, I will say in my years in the Army, uh, I dealt with a lot of people. You know, I know people from North Dakota over the, over the course of time. And I've had to work with them, uh, you know, either be led by them, mentor them, guide them, uh, to try to see the way forward for what's best for the mission. The one thing that I see here with you all is everybody cares for the children. And you do a great job at it. And the staff does, and the teachers do. And, and that one thing that we really focus on are the kids. And nobody's gonna sit here and say that you don't do that, right? And what I bring is, I've been lucky enough, like I said, the embassies, I've chaired five committees in the intelligence community from NSA to CIA to DIA to State Department to a whole bunch of other acronyms that I don't wanna go into tonight. And just getting that same vision, that mission, uh, trying to take everybody's uh, vision, their, what they want into account and bring it together uh, is what I bring. I bring a different perspective, a different background. I like to hear ideas from everybody across the board and try to mesh that together. Um, you know, one of those things is to be respectful and understand each other and then try to make that a cohesive unit. Sometimes we agree on everything, sometimes we don't. And that's what that is. But all opinions should be valued and I've, I've tried to live by that is my part of my army ethos, part of how I live my life today. Um, I won't say much more except 
I really appreciate the opportunity to stand here and speak before you all. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity. Um, like I said, whoever you choose, and from what I've heard tonight, has a hard job ahead of them, as you all do. Uh, I thank you for the job you do, and I hope uh, I thank you for your consideration. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Cripps. Ms. Larimore? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Just kidding. Hi, my name is Barbara Larimore. Um, some know me as Recess Mom. Um, a strange and storied path has led me to your dais today. I'll start at the beginning for those who don't know me. Uh, I started, I identified a problem. Children in this county have unrealistic expectations on their attention spans, especially elementary school kids. Um, I came up with a solution. Let's add more recess to the school day and bring back childhood to our children. Um, not only for their well-being, but because breaks and exercise are shown to improve their academic performance, decrease obesity, and reduce behavioral issues. Uh, as a nation, we are starting to realize that we swung the dial too far with no child left behind and stripped the fun and realistic expectations um, for children away. Um, so I brought my issue up the food chain, uh, started at the bottom, started at my local uh, school advisory council, no help there. Um, I went on up, talked to the Kelly Center, sorry guys, not much help there. Um, I came to this board, sorry again, not a lot of help here. Um, here is the response I received, and parents nod your head if you receive this too. You seem like a nice lady, but it's impossible. Um, as a word of advice, uh, that's probably the last thing you should say to a mom trying to help her kids. So on I went, up the food chain to my delegate, and finally I got someone to say, I will help you. Um, eventually, eventually, it was a long election season, we found someone uh, to sponsor legislation for this recess bill, or the right to recess bill, HB 1419. Um, it wasn't easy, but through collaboration and hard work on both sides of the aisle, we achieved something great. I equate this situation to the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy goes to the wizard and says, please, I want to go home to Kansas. And he says, sure, but you must bring me the Wicked Witch of the West broom first. The wizard gives her an impossible task in the hopes that she just goes away forever. By the way, I'm Dorothy in this scenario. I stand before you today with the broom. Now the ball truly is in the court of this board, and if given the opportunity to lead this board, I would put HB 1419 on the agenda and show that Prince William County Schools is a just and progressive place that truly has the best interest of the students at heart. I'm telling you this story to illustrate that I have the focus and the energy to do what needs to be done. There is nothing stopping me from fighting for school safety, special education, teacher compensation, overcrowding, with the same drive and passion. A lot of what happens here is just shrouded in mystery, and we need to change that. We need better constituent services and office hours that work. I want the school board to focus hard on finding solutions to people's problems. We leave no one behind, and we crush the not-my-job perception that many Prince William County residents have and openly share. If I could not find a solution to a constituent's problems, I would give them a seat at the table so they could help to craft possibilities yet untapped. There are people here who have good ideas, smart, incredible people. Um, and I would really like to use those people to, to move forward in, in the school system. We also need a stronger relationship to be built between the Board of County Supervisors, and I want to lead that charge. Basically, I'm every parent who ever called a school board member and never got a call back. I am every parent who had to fight to get services for their child. I am every parent who watched the divisiveness and infighting and wanted to scream in frustration. I am every parent who ever attempted to navigate the school's website. I am every parent who has, given the run who has been given the runaround time and time again and said that's enough. With two children in the public school system, I have a vested interest in the schools and its leadership. We cannot wait till tomorrow to get what we need for our students. We need someone with time and energy to get things done. 
Please consider me that person. 39 seconds. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Blairmore. Sarah, I'm sorry, Barbara Latif. Good evening, Madam Chair, Honorable School Board Members, Mr. Superintendent. My name is Barbara Latif. I want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak this evening. Applying for the School Board Interim Chair has come with significant reflection. This position requires a person committed to building consensus, seeking common ground, and an unwavering commitment to the mission of Prince William County Schools, which is to provide a world-class education. This individual must serve the students, teachers, staff, and taxpayers. I believe I'm qualified to serve in this position for some important reasons. I'm a graduate of public schools from kindergarten through medical school. I'm a practicing ophthalmologist in Prince William County and I serve as an assistant professor at George Washington University School of Medicine. I work with medical students, college students, and high school students. I have four children in the Prince William County schools, ninth grade, seventh grade, fifth grade, and first. Education is a family affair at our house. My wife is the only practicing pediatric neurologist in Prince William County. She takes care of students in our school division who require IEPs, concussion clearance, and developmental evaluations. As a family, we have been involved with the PTOs at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. We have supported a number of innovative clubs and programs at our elementary and middle schools that provide STEM enrichment for all students. My wife has also served on the Superintendent's Advisory Council for the past seven years and she has been a member of the state SOL Reform and Innovation Committee. This has allowed us to see up close the issues facing schools across the county and state. We are very active in the community and spend most weekends on any given field. We've been with Coles Little League, NVSE Soccer, EPWBA Basketball, Royals Lacrosse, and Meadowbrook Mako's Swim Team, just to name a few. I currently serve on the Spark Foundation Board, specifically on the Innovation Grants Committee. There, I have had the privilege of evaluating programs that our own teachers are creating and promoting. I've recently gained valuable experience in higher education by serving on the Board of Visitors at the University of Virginia. There, I serve as chair of the Audit Compliance Risk Committee and the vice chair of the Health System Board. I've gained experience dealing with large budgets and the challenges of resource allocation. Having said that, I fully recognize this job is not and should not be about me, but it's about the community that welcomed my family and helped me thrive for the last 15 years. I bring to the table the view of parents whose students are actively engaged in the school system. My experience is current and extends through all age ranges. I have a good understanding of what challenges our teachers, administrators, and students face. I believe closing the achievement gap at all levels is an issue that is extremely important and requires considerable attention. If we do this, we can break barriers and build futures. I believe our teachers need to be given the tools, infrastructure, and pay to support their efforts in doing this. Let me be clear, our teachers are our greatest resources. If you poll, if you poll college students and ask them what was their most important experience prior to entering college, a very high number point to that terrific teacher or coach who was a great source of encouragement, mentoring and counseling. We must commit to doing all we can to ensure we recruit and retain the best teachers. Providing safe, secure schools and reducing the need for trailers should also be our top priorities. These challenges are not new, solutions do exist, and we as a community need to prioritize what is important and choose how to enact change for the benefit of our school system and broader community. My record of service and commitment to public education has given me much insight and experience. Serving on different boards has allowed me to understand the nature of building consensus, tackling controversial issues, and solving them in a collegial way with limited resources and shrinking budgets. This experience can be an asset to help this board address challenges of improving our world-class school system. So how do we do this? We must recognize best practices that exist within and outside our school system and adopt them on a wider basis throughout the county. We must look at programs we offer and see if they fulfill their goals. If not, change or discard them. We must look at ways of improving our schools without new spending and cutting poorly performing programs. 
We must work with the Board of Supervisors, community leaders, General Assembly, Governor, and our very own Secretary of Education, Atif Karni, to assist with the proper funding and improved access to state financial support and resources. Attention to these areas can free up resources for increased teacher pay and infrastructure needs. But ultimately, we as a county need to decide how to fund our schools to make sure they continue to improve. I hope you will give full consideration to my application. As a concerned citizen and parent, I promise to work with each of you to address the issues of concern to parents, teachers, and staff. I will commit to doing this with full civility and in the spirit of always first finding our common ground and using that as our starting point. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah Pitkin. Good evening, Madam Acting Chair and School Board members. My name is Sarah Pitkin. I live in the Coles District with my husband, Jason Hickman, and our four children. Mosby attends Signal Hill, Izzy and Tommy attend Pennington, and Gigi attends Osborne Park. When the opening for this position was announced, I decided my background may be a good fit for the needs of the school board. And as you've read, I am a graduate of Prince William County Schools from the Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. I went on and earned my BA from the College of William & Mary, a master's in education from Vanderbilt, and a doctorate in speech pathology from Kent State. My parents started their careers as teachers. My sisters and I have all been teachers. So I understand education from behind the desk. Um, as a private therapist, I had a unique experience in contracting with school systems to design programs for children with special education needs. And as a parent, I have been an advocate for children, and I understand education from a consumer's viewpoint. As a business person, I work with my sister every day, so I have great skills in compromise and conflict management. Being a business person, I understand the value and the needs of budgeting, forecasting, and finding ways to make the unbudgeted work. I have extensive knowledge in financials, and have spent considerable time evaluating financials. Um, in our 40-year-old business, we are responsible for employees, employee morale, employee retention. We're responsible for building and equipment maintenance and for technology. Um, the business experience allows me an understanding of how it takes a team to do a job and a well-trained, happy team to do a job well. My experience on being members of boards is quite extensive. I've been on national, state, and local boards, and I'm a board member on the Virginia Retail Merchants Association. I'm a member of the Medical Affairs Committee at the Sentara Northern Virginia Medical Center. I am a board member of the ARC of Greater Prince William and Insight, and I serve as their secretary. I am on the board of Didlake, which is one of the largest organizations in the state providing jobs for people with disabilities. Um, I have served as their secretary and was just elected their treasurer. And I am a member of the board of directors for the Potomac Health Foundation, which grants about $5 million a year to um, provide access, innovation, and prevention health for health-related issues in the eastern end of Prince William County. I am also the treasurer of the PTO, um, Pennington PTO. Um, I've been through changes in leadership on both boards and in business, and I know it can be difficult. So when I saw that the chairman had resigned, I thought we need someone who can step in and work on the goals that have already been, been determined with a budget that is being finalized. You guys have worked hard for them. You have been elected by the people for the ideas that you have gotten passed. And I asked to be chosen to work. I asked to be chosen to work next to you in keeping your goals and your budget active until the electorate chooses a new chairman. Thank you. Kevin Raymond. Don Don Richardson.
Well, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Dr. Waltz. 17 years ago, I stood in the old school board meeting room and asked your predecessors to appoint me to fill the Gainesville seat on this board. It was the beginning of 10 very satisfying years of public service. Despite all the stuff that you have to put up with, service on a school board can be very rewarding. That's why I want to come back, even if it's only for a short time. I believe I can help restore the productive, professional work environment that we had before, and I also believe that my experience will be useful in dealing with some of your top issues of today. There are a lot of talented people sitting here, and your decision is not going to be an easy one. So what factors should guide you? First, you all know there's a whole lot more to being a school board member than most folks realize. The interim chair needs to be able to do that job effectively from day one. Prior service on this board should be a big factor for you to consider. My 10 years of service here taught me a lot. Many of the issues that come before you now are very similar or even identical to issues that have been dealt with by past boards. My experience with them should be useful to you in coming to decisions about them. Second is leadership ability. The board chair represents the whole board before the public. And that requires someone who can listen to all members and try to forge a consensus. I've been a leader in a number of organizations, most of which were involved with serving young people in one way or another. I've been a scoutmaster. I was the vice president of a youth soccer league for a number of years. I was the advisory uh, council chairman for Alvi, or not Alvi, Mountain View Elementary School. For seven years, I was the chairman of the board of directors of Fauquier Community Theater. Recently, I've been the chairman of your infrastructure task force also. I've demonstrated the ability to work with groups of people and lead them toward common goals. The third area to consider is how each candidate's specific experiences can help you address major issues that you are dealing with or may need to deal with right now. These days, safety and security of our schools are on everyone's mind, and as one of the board members who co-founded the Safe Schools Advisory Council and stayed involved with it for most of my tenure on the board, I think my perspective would be very helpful. Another issue I know that's of interest to you and also to the public is the infrastructure deficits at many of our older schools. I've been leading the infrastructure task force for the last year and a half, and I want to make sure we stay on track to come to a recommendation for a plan to remediate the deficits at our older middle and high schools. A word you hear a lot these days is accountability. A big piece of that is financial accountability. As the first chairman of the school board's internal audit committee, I worked with the auditor to define the process that is used today to give the school board better insight into how your tax dollars are being spent. And finally, transparency. I'm proud of my efforts to get the school board's agenda process online and available to members of the public, but I also know that transparency is best served by following well-established rules of governance, such as Robert's rules. I'm committed to making decisions the right way so that no one feels that decisions were made in haste or without adequate public input. I want you to feel comfortable in choosing me to serve with you, so please do not hesitate to reach out later if there are any specific questions I can answer. And thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Heather's, Heather Steele. Good evening, school board members. My name is Heather Steele, and my resume is on file with you. I have been an attorney practicing law here in Virginia for 10 years. I obtained my law degree from George Mason University in Arlington, and I'm presently the litigation partner at a local law firm called Compton and Dueling. I moved to Prince William County to raise my family and to live in the community where I work. I care deeply about the success of Prince William County schools. I have three young daughters, two of whom are in first grade and kindergarten at Ashland Elementary, which has again received a School of Excellence Award as a result of the hard work of Ashland's teachers and staff, as well as our great principal, Andy Jacks, who I just found out today has also been awarded the National Distinguished Principal of the Year Award for the entire Commonwealth of Virginia, which I think is fantastic and deserves a round of applause. I would like to serve as interim chair because I'm invested in making sure that my three girls, as well as all of the other students in Prince William County, receive a world-class education. I care deeply about this community, and I want to see us reach our full potential. 
I care deeply about not wasting assets that are given to us. I care deeply about using our resources effectively and efficiently. That includes both our time and our money. I've served for five years on the Spark Board, which is, as you know, the Prince William Education Foundation, where we support business partnerships uh, with the community to provide resources for our Prince William County kids. During that time, I have served on the board's scholarship committee, where we review applications from graduating students for scholarships, such as the Dr. Kelly Scholarship and the Chick-fil-A Scholarship, as well as a career and technical education scholarship. I've seen firsthand the incredible students that our school district produces, and I'm proud to be a member of the business community supporting our schools. I've also served as a board member of Smart Beginnings Greater Prince William, which is a public-private partnership that works to increase literacy, preschool resources, and kindergarten readiness for kids ages 0 to 5 in Prince William County, Manassas, and Manassas Park. I'm currently the board's treasurer, and I work with Sharon Henry and the Spark Board, Spark is the fiscal agent for Smart Beginnings, to help manage the resources entrusted to Smart Beginnings from the Virginia Early Childhood Foundation, known as VECF. Smart Beginnings works with the local business community, as well as with Head Start and VECF, to increase the number of Virginia Preschool Initiative VPI seats available to our kids, so we can help them be kindergarten ready. As interim chairperson, I would work to ensure the board's meetings run in an efficient and effective manner. I would seek to provide clear and straightforward information to the public about our decision making and budgeting, and I would work to use our nearly $1.2 billion budget to benefit our students, teachers, and staff. I would also work to increase our interactions and engagement with the business community through SPARKS efforts as well as working to engage local business leaders to support our school's initiatives. Although the school system has an enormous budget, there are still items that will be lacking funding, and engaging with the business community can help to solve some of those issues. Like SPARKS says, great schools are everyone's business. As an attorney, I've spent many years helping parties work out conflicts. Building this skill set has helped me to be able to see all sides of an issue and bring a sense of unity to both sides, even in disagreements. I work every day to resolve disputes with professionalism, candor, and compassion, even and especially with people who disagree with me. You as the school board are a corporate body, and you are at your best when you are working in unison with your fellow board members. A chairman should provide servant leadership to help the board's members come together and act cohesively to support the school system and its students in the best way possible. I would hope to provide that servant leadership as the interim chair. Thank you for your time, and I hope to support you all in making great decisions for our kids. Thank, Thank you. you. L London Steverson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Superintendent, Vice Chairwoman, Chairperson, I should say and members of the board. My name is London Steverson. My address is on file with the clerk. I am a retired Coast Guard lawyer and a retired administrative law judge. I'm a father of four children, all of whom are students in the Prince William County public school system. All of my 44 years of work have been in the area of public service. Even in retirement, I consider myself to be a public servant. I am not a politician. I have no political agenda. I am a public servant. I believe that it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Tonight I'm speaking to you as a candidate for the interim chairperson position. I feel it is my duty to offer my experience and my abilities to this board. Most of my experience has been in the area of law in the legal field, except for a couple of years 
right out of the Coast Guard Academy where I spent breaking ice at the South Pole. But I have lectured. I have lectured at foreign and international institutions. I have lectured in Hungary. I have lectured as part of the American corners of the U.S. State Department in Hungary. I believe that education is the foundation for our students in the 21st century. Even though my public education was received in the Deep South in a very 100% segregated school system, we received a very good education because we were taught to think. We were taught to think critically. Even though we were denied access to some of the public services, we still received a good education because we were educated. We were not indoctrinated. We were politically aware, but education was our first priority. Our teachers were vested in us. They had a vested interest in giving us a good education. They instilled in us a hunger for knowledge and higher education. They also prepared us to go to work immediately in case we did not go to higher education. We learned to read and write. We learned script. We learned how to write our own signature. I am not sure that we can cure all of the problems that confront us, but I am willing to work with the experts that are available here to find some common sense solution to some very complicated problems. I believe that a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. And our kids must be prepared to confront the 21st century world. This world is a very different world than the one that I grew up in. Knowledge has exploded and so have opportunities. I believe in Prince William County we have some very good teachers. And I believe that education takes place inside of the classroom between the teacher and the students. So we must create an environment where the teachers and the students can thrive and function harmoniously. Robert Kennedy is very famous for saying, some people see things as they are and ask why. But I see things as they should be and ask why not. I believe that we can work together and find some common Thank sense you. solutions. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Stevenson. Thank you. Richard Wellman. Richard Wellman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, school board. Uh, my name is Richard Wellman. I am a uh, recently retired Lieutenant Colonel of the United States Army. Uh, served 29 years. Uh, my next to last assignment brought me to the DC area where I was the Chief Information Officer of Arlington National Cemetery for three years. Uh, following that, I was reassigned to uh, uh, the, Joint, the United States Army Special Operations Command at Fort Bragg. Um, why that's important is what brought me here in 2013 after sitting in Afghanistan, uh, just getting an assignments branch call to say, hey, you're going to go to, to D.C.? Okay, great. Now, 
my left to my wife to pick where we're going to live and she chose Manassas Virginia and uh, I lived in the uh, Coles district for uh, well over three years I went off to uh, Fort Bragg my family stayed here and one of the reasons why we stayed was because these are some awesome schools here in Prince William County I've lived uh, my family and I have lived all over the world they've been in the Department of uh, Defense Education Activity schools in Japan uh, my family's from, uh, my wife and, and half my kids are from California, where um, there are some really bad schools there. Uh, and as you move east from uh, the West Coast, uh, I'm from originally from Kansas. I thought I got a really good education. I uh, uh, graduated the University of Kansas back in 97 with a bachelor's degree in business management uh, and moved to uh, you know, moved out to the, my Army career. Uh, as we move further east, uh, I've stationed in uh, Fort, Stewart, or Fort Stewart and Fort jo uh, Gordon, Georgia, where my uh, oldest daughter attended school there. It was pretty good. But it wasn't until we got here that I saw really world-class education being performed. And so when the radio announcement said that they were looking for an interim school board chairman, uh, and now that I'm retired and have a steady job with uh, pretty, pretty steady hours, I thought, now's the time for me to start giving back. I spent a lot of time away from my kids, and now's the time I wanted to, uh, to help them with their education. I've got uh, two kids right now, uh, a senior at, uh, or a, a I'm sorry, a freshman at uh, Patriot High School. I got a daughter that's a sixth grader at Mars Deller, and I've got uh, coming up on four grandchildren who will all be at either uh, Piney Branch or uh, the oldest one at uh, uh, Gainesville Middle School. So I, I've got a lot of vested interest in ensuring that the uh, this school board performs well, and I want to be a part of that. What I bring is a is a 29-year career in the Army that's led me around the world. I've led troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. I've also been trained by some of the finest educators the United States Army has to provide. I'm a big fan of Stephen Covey. You know, one of the things, there are really three things that Stephen Covey talks a lot about is seek first to understand then be understood. So I will approach this job trying to learn what needs to be done and then approach it with an open mind. Seek the win-win where everybody should be able to walk away from a, a, a situation feeling that they got something out of it. And then also, you know, we, we have to uh, slow down for a second. I'm going to approach this job with an, with an open mind and provide transparency and professionalism to how meetings are ran. I've managed uh, millions of dollars of equipment and money for the United States Army and, and areas all over the world. And I feel that with the leadership and the personality I bring, I, I do not panic. I, I've seen lots of uh, stressful situations, and I always approach it with a smile on my face and a song in my heart because I know things are not that bad. The sun will rise tomorrow, and the world will continue turning. So uh, crisis will come, and they will be dealt with, and we'll move forward. And so that's the attitude I want to bring to this job. I was told a long time ago that the uh, organization takes on the personality of its leadership. And I think that a, a professional, while collegial, lighthearted, collaborative environment would be really good because I want to go home every night uh, if I'm selected to be the interim school board chairman and look my kids or look my grandkids in the face and go, I did the very best I could for you and I helped make sure that the resources that my family and I and everybody else's family put into this school board and the school district are used in a, in a very well reasoned, logical, fiscally sound uh, manner that ensures that we get the best return for the buck. You know, it's, you know, decisions have to be made and sometimes, you know, you, you act on the information that you have on hand and you just make the best call you can. But when I make a decision, whether it's here or in Afghanistan, Iraq, wherever, Japan, where I was stationed, I always approach that as, you know, um, making the, the biggest bang for the longest period of time, the most sustainable period of time. And that's the attitude on, and ideas that I want to bring to the board. And I thank you for your time. Lori Williams. I know I'm one of the last ones, so I'll try to be brief. <laughs> my name's Lori Williams. Um, my address is on record with the clerk. 
thank you all for listening to me tonight and giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, I don't have a speech prepared because sometimes I feel like it's best to speak from the heart. So with that said, I'd like to tell you a bit, little bit about my story. Um, I grew up in a very poor rural town, um, started my educational career in a single room schoolhouse. Can still remember running up the street on the dirt road and the smell of the dirt and the school bell ringing. Um, and that actually was a blessing to me because from that point on in my career as um, in primary education, I really never took anything for granted as far as having a really great teacher that believed in you. Um, from there, after graduating high school, I attended George Mason University um, where I paid my own way through college. Um, I did extremely well. I was offered um, a study abroad opportunity with Oxford. Um, I graduated with honors and took a position with a big four accounting firm where I was an auditor of um, public universities in Virginia. Um, some of the areas that I reviewed were grants management um, and financial aid. Um, from there, I went into private industry where I was um, a corporate controller and I served on several boards, um, several committees. Um, I also served in local government. I was a uh, compliance officer in a local government. Um, they didn't have an internal audit department, so I was basically it for them. So I was responsible for preparing the CFO for board meetings, um, prepping them for any talks that they had to do on the financial status of the city. Um, from there, I uh, got a job at my current agency. I started as a forensic accountant, and now I'm currently working at the training division for my agency, where I have um, audit oversight of all training activity, all curriculum management. Um, we train tens of thousands of people a year, and our budget is probably twice that in the millions. Um, so I really feel like all that experience um, has prepared me for a position like this. Um, I am a public servant at heart, which is why I work for the agency that I do right now. And I feel like this would just be an additional opportunity to serve a community that I feel really, um, I believe in. We moved from, um, when my daughter was little, from southeastern Virginia, not a very diverse school system at all, um, and that was really one of the driving factors for us moving here. I wanted her to attend a school district that really had a lot of diversity and reflected where the world is today, and I feel like Prince William County really does that, um, but they also have exceptional teachers. The curriculum is amazing. Um, I can speak that because I've witnessed other school systems that have very subpar curriculum. So um, I'm just fortunate to have the opportunity to raise my daughter in this county and attend the schools here. We have nothing but the best things to say about them. Um, with that said, I tonight have learned that there are some people that don't haven't necessarily had that same experience in the county, but I don't think that it has to end there. I think that every problem has a solution. Um, so I welcome the opportunity to serve the county and hopefully um, not contribute to the problems, instead contribute to the solution. So thank you very much. Tried to keep it brief for y'all. <laughs> thank you. Wendy Wise. Lisa Zargapur? Yes. I got a call. You got it. Madam Chairwoman, school board members, and Dr. Waltz, my name is Lisa Zargapur, and I am here today for our students for their future. This is Prince William County's fault. Education is my passion, and it all started here because I went to Prince William County schools. I went to Coles Elementary, Parkside Middle, and I graduated from Osborne Park High School. And I loved my experiences here in the county, from being a student to also raising my children here. One has graduated, one will graduate, and one is in middle school. Uh, I also got to substitute while I was in the county in my early years in my early 20s. And then later on when I was raising my kids, I went back to substituting so I could prepare for a career in teaching. And then I did my student teaching here. 
I'm grateful for the, maintain, the relationships that I have maintained with my mentor teachers here in Prince William County and the opportunities that this county gave me. Now I would like to give something back. So educating children is my passion and I'm an arts educator in Fairfax County Public Schools. So I am well aware of what the policies that are set by school boards, how they affect our students and our staff. I know how it can lighten our teaching burdens or require more of me and my colleagues. When I started my master's degree in education, we were told that our kindergartners were going to have anywhere from 15 to 30 major careers in their lifetime. And those careers, those jobs have not even been invented yet. It's kind of a big, a big deal, isn't it? We have to educate our children and prepare them for things we haven't even experienced ourselves. They process information a little more quickly than the generation of kids before them. And they come into school with a digital footprint. So while technology has infiltrated all aspects of our lives, our students remain quite human. They still need developmentally appropriate practices for our kids. They need time to develop their skills. They need time to develop their social skills and assimilate those skills. Teachers have to adjust for these needs all the time, and a school board should also be working toward these goals. I'm passionate about a growth mindset. It's how we should envision ourselves and our students. We should promote ideas that encourage social and academic growth, and when we see potential in our students, they will do amazing things. Finding the best way for policy to meet practice is my passion as a practicing teacher. I believe a career educator's voice on a school board is essential. A practicing teacher. Our school board and school division should continue to innovate. We hear so much about accountability in education and our school board share in that as well. We should focus on these three main ideas. One is equity. We've heard a lot about that tonight. Equity in education should focus on meeting the needs of students who are traditionally underserved, such as our ESL kids, our low socioeconomic kids, students of color, and students with disabilities. We should be culturally responsive to our very diverse population. And by the way, as a self-proclaimed education geek, while I was on my winter break, we got off just a couple days earlier than Prince William County did, I came to your multicultural and diversity training. It's amazing. If you haven't done it, do it. It's a great program. We also need to focus on safety and security, which we have heard a lot about tonight as well. And I'm not talking about just how buildings lock up and who's watching the doors, but also the environment inside. If our students or our staff or feeling bullied, we need to fix those things. And I know we already have things in place. We already have them, we just need to do them to fidelity. And we also need to make sure our behavior systems are in place to support our kids and keep them on a path of excellence, not to punishment. Last, we need to make sure that our schools are staffed fully to meet our students' needs and that all of our employees are fairly compensated and supported. I work with educators every day who feel overwhelmed and under-supported sometimes not even appreciated. So we need to invest in a positive work environment so that we can have the people who spend time with our children every day really willing to come to work. Education is my passion, and a lifetime of multiple educational experiences will allow me to help bridge a gap between the policy and practice. People who know me well know that I googled how to school board, how to Robert's rules. They know that. I feel like my, my job as a teacher brings skills of collaboration, cooperation, responding to community concerns, receiving feedback, which informs my next steps, and problem solving. I look forward to your decision. Good luck tonight. Thank you so much. My name is Lisa Zargapur, and I am here for our students for their future. Board members, we have uh, another 17 um, citizens who would like to make comments and support um, candidates. Uh, if there is no objection to taking a five minute break or recess, five minutes. If there are no objection, we are in recess for five minutes. And five minutes only. To remind you that you have three minutes, and if you would watch the monitor, when it turns yellow, you have 30 seconds, and when it's red, I will gently remind you that your time is up. 
Ms. Nuzo? Ms. Nuzo, yes. Good evening. Hi, my name is Ann Nuzzo. I'm here this evening to speak to you about the interim chairman position currently available on the school board. Wow, 20 candidates. That's a lot of people. Which confirms my suspicion that many people across Prince William County have serious concerns regarding the school board. At this moment, the school board has an opportunity to do a reset, to move forward with cooperation, a unified purpose, and with less personal histrionics than has previously been displayed. So how do you choose widely with 20 options? I have no doubt that each of the individuals who have placed his or her hat in the ring is intelligent, self-motivated, <coughs> highly qualified, and most importantly, has a vested interest in the students in Prince William County. But I want someone who will truly hit the ground running, someone who fully understands the complexities of Prince William County school system, who thoroughly understands the current issues facing this board, who has children that attend Prince William County schools, someone who has shown a strong commitment to his or her community and to the Prince William County school community. I don't want someone with an agenda or who wants to change the world in six months. I want someone who will listen, someone who has shown a willingness to respond to the needs and concerns of Prince William County parents and students. I believe that person to be Mr. Sean Brand. I've known Mr. Brand for over seven years when our children began attending Piney Branch together. Mr. Brand encouraged my participation with the Piney Branch Advisory Council as a way to be active and engaged within our new school community. During that time, Mr. Brand's ability to work effectively with others, to be a good listener, to be organized with a strong attention to detail were clearly evident. Since that time, I have served with Mr. Brand on the Boundary Committee for Chris Young Elementary School, on the Superintendent's Advisory Council on Instruction, and Mr. Brand's representative on the Safe Schools Advisory Council. His leadership and commitment to Prince William County Schools were always evident. In addition, Mr. Brand serves as chair for his and my son's Boy Scout Troop, PAC 1343. I know Mr. Brand to be a committed family man and attends every one of his children's various sporting events. Again, his leadership skills and abilities are always evident. During Mr. Brand's time representing the Bensfield District for Mr. Trenum, all of these skills came into play. Mr. Brand was able to jump in and work, effect work effectively to represent the Brunsfield area. There really is no question that Mr. Brand is up to the task of interim chair and in helping to lead the school board into a more productive future. While Mr. Brand and I differ greatly on what each of us deems good music and the appropriate use of emojis and emails, we do not differ on what we want and need to have happen with Prince William County School System and the school board. I know that I speak for many families in the Brentsville area and across Prince William County when I say that I hope you make the right decision by choosing Mr. Brand as our interim chair. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Downer. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Joe Downer. My address is on file. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I'm here this evening to follow up on an email I addressed to this board the evening of March 20th, in which I expressed my support for the selection of Mr. Sean Brand for the position of interim chair of the Prince William County School Board. I believe that Mr. Brand is unequivocally the best candidate for this position. Now more than ever, ours is a time when we need leaders of integrity, dignity, and that have an ability to respectfully listen and engage with others. During Sean's tenure as the acting school board member of the Brinsville District from September 2016 to October 2017, he served his community in our county with distinction and class. He is a man that seeks to build up those whom he is around, not tear them down. He has a genuine desire to see our students and teachers succeed, not only during their time with Prince William County Schools, but beyond. Sean's prior experience as a member of this very board point to his readiness for the task at hand. He understands the process the way meetings should run, and he has established working relationships with all of you in this capacity. He is reasonable, he is nonpartisan, and he has shown numerous times that he can work with people on all sides of the political spectrum to achieve the shared goal of providing for our students and teachers. Logically, Mr. Brand offers you the smoothest transition possible, and appealing to our ideals, he represents everything you want in a strong, effective leader. Many of you can attest to the integrity and professionalism of Mr. Brand. On October 4th, 2017, during Sean's last meeting, 
uh, serving as acting school board representative of the Brentsville District, Mr. Wilk, you said the following, I came out very early in, supporting, in support of putting you on this board no matter what your party or position was. I think it's a matter of who best represents the district and I'm really honored to work with you. On the same date, Ms. Ralston, you said, Sean, I went through a lot to get you here. I just want you to know that. And I don't know why you're leaving. You didn't get my permission just yet. I've enjoyed you. I'm glad you are here. Too bad I can't figure out how to keep you here. And finally, Ms. Williams, you said in the same meeting as you sought to extend your thanks to Mr. Brandt for his service, you said, it's been a pleasure serving with you on the school board and also on the joint CFP committee with the Board of County Supervisors. Everything that has been said tonight, I second to the highest extent. I must say that you absolutely embody professionalism and it's absolutely been a pleasure. You have really outdone us all and I'm really thankful that I've had the opportunity to know you and to work with you. It's been a pleasure. I've learned a lot. Thank you so much for your service. In short, aside from him being a Yankees fan, I can think of no reason why you should not select Sean Brand for the interim chair of the Prince William County School Board. And as a Boston sports fan, even I am willing to overlook this just this once. I mean no disrespect to any of the other fine candidates who have graciously stepped forward to serve our community, but I am here to respectfully urge you to please select Mr. Sean Brand. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Rebecca Anderson. Good evening. My name is Rebecca Anderson and my address is on file. I'm a resident of Prince William County and a parent of students in PWCS. I've been serving as an educator in PWCS for the last 12 years. I currently teach music at Ashland Elementary, hashtag Ashland Soar. I'm speaking tonight in support of Lisa Zargapur, who would make a fantastic interim chairman of the Prince William County School Board. Lisa Zargapur teaches elementary general music in Fairfax County. I've known Lisa for over a decade, getting to know her at all day Saturday music workshops, taking our ORF certification courses at GMU, attending national music conferences, and enjoying impromptu weekend music teacher lesson sharings in friends' basements. Like me, when Lisa is passionate about something, she isn't just passionate about it halfway, and everything she does has direct benefit for students. Elementary music teachers have an interesting role in school communities because we get to see, teach, and interact with every student and family in a school. This helps form a broad perspective, not only in the way that buildings work, but in the needs of each community where one has worked. Having taught music in different schools, long-term substitute positions in PWCS, and having children go through the school system in PWCS, Lisa has a vast knowledge of the county in terms of curriculum, communities, policies, and needs of all stakeholders. When I contacted a colleague, Rachel Grimsby, who used to teach with Lisa in Fairfax County, she had this to say. Quote, Lisa is a dedicated individual who has served her community. She's a passionate educator who goes above and beyond to meet the needs of her students, including using personal resources to fill classroom needs. Lisa is current on political climate, and she can work with anyone because she is not hung up on the party line. She is the most amazing colleague a person could have. She loves people, loves to build others up, and is one of the most selfless individuals I know. Unquote. On the morning of October 17th, 2017, Inside Nova reported that the Prince William Academy, a small private preschool off of Spriggs Road, had been vandalized with swastika graffiti. Lisa, upon seeing the offensive images online, packed up some cleaning supplies and went to go clean the sign. I appreciate that Lisa saw the need. She put the effort toward helping. She didn't seek recognition. She didn't even wait for a photo opportunity. If I hadn't told you just now, you probably wouldn't have even known she'd done that. Because of her unique and varied perspective, her willingness to go above and beyond, and her get it done attitude, I strongly recommend Lisa Zargapur for the position of interim chairman of the Prince William County Bo School Board. Thank you. Deb Deborah Bishop. Good evening, Vice Chairman Jesse, school board members, Dr. Waltz, and Ms. Arnold. My name is Deborah Bishop and my address is on file. I come before you tonight as a Prince William County citizen with regard to the interim chairperson position. 
Among the list of candidates published recently in the paper, there's politicians, there's previous interim board members, lawyers, doctors, a previous chair of the school board, and then there's Dr. Dower, my friend and former coworker. <clears throat> Dr. Dower stands out among them as a proven leader and champion for youth, having dedicated her professional career as a school psychologist and supervisor of student assistant and prevention programs. Many of you have collaborated with her on many things regarding prevention programs, or you may have received a debriefing from her uh, from the critical instant team she supervised or her work with the juvenile judges and attendance officers. Her legacy also includes bringing peer diversity and mediation training the Olvaeus Bullying Program, and the Anti-Defamation League's No Place for Hate Program to PWCS. Dr. Dower collaborated and connected with many state, regional, and local services, as you can see from her resume. I mentioned these programs and services for you to review so that you might have a snapshot of the depth and breadth of her credibility and involvement with children and families in PWCS and Prince William County. Her support for all children, but most notably the support for those disenfranchised and vulnerable, has been noted with many accolades and awards she has received. Due to the recent resignation of the Prince William County School Board Chairperson, you as the board have the very rare opportunity to appoint an interim chair, a chairperson who will place all youth of PWCS first, someone with no personal or political agenda or ambitions, somebody such as Dr. Doreen Dower. Ronald Reagan once said, the greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He's the one who gets people to do the greatest things. Leaders take action to make meaningful change. As a change agent, Dr. Dower is skillful at finding early adapters and bringing in others to expand a program. But leaders also do several other things. They learn. She's a lifelong learner. They empower. Empowering others is their specialty that leads to respect and trust, which builds relationships where everyone is focused on obtaining a specific goal. Adapt, as we all know, everything can change in a heartbeat. They need to be flexible, have through an array of situations and challenges, and persevere to accomplish goals, another quality she has. Delegate, check. Engage, check. Reflect, constantly. Continuous improvement, check. And lastly, service. She's a well-established member of this uh, community who would lead the school board in making nonpartisan decisions and put the best interest of children first. Your vote for Dr. Doreen Dower, a proven leader and educator for the interim chairperson appointment, will move the school board back to the business of providing a world-class education for all children in Prince William County Schools. Thank you in advance for your consideration of Dr. Dower for this position. Thank you. Bill Haas. Good evening, Madam Vice Chairwoman Jesse, school board members, Dr. Waltz, and Ms. Arnold. My name is Kalinda Hawkins, and my address is on file. I, am, uh, I live in the Coles District. I have uh, had three children who graduated from Prince William County. And the reason I am here is it is a pleasure to speak on behalf of Dr. Dower. Every single one of you who sit there have a lot of strengths, many strengths. And when I got hired by Dr. Dower, that's exactly what she did. She saw my strengths, and she helped me use those strengths in order to impact a community the way she has impacted the community. With Dr. Dower's leadership, when she has hired attendance officers, they have reflected the diversity of our community. I stand here as a Spanish-speaking person. Earlier, you saw Gary Wortham, who is a coach at uh, Woodridge High School. You have several other attendance officers that reflect that community. And why is that important? Because in order to be able to establish partnerships with the community, you be, need to be able to identify with them. And for that reason, that is one of her strengths. The strength is to be able to use each and one of your strengths in order to bring the best education or continue to provide a great education for our students. There are many things that uh, we face. Bullying, mental health, substance abuse, economic stressors, homelessness, suicide, 
And we, you know what Dr. Dower has ensured us as an, as an attendance officer? That we are trained to be able to recognize those things, to be able to go and to that student, to that family, and be able to give them the resources, guide them, help them, see what we can do in order to improve attendance. Attendance has improved quite a bit under her leadership. And why is that important? Because a student needs to be in school in order for the amazing teachers that are here in Prince William County to be able to give them instruction. Therefore, Dr. Dower brings a lot of skill. She is going to be able to help our community. And in the eight months that uh, she uh, if you select, or when you select her, I should say, she is going to be able to enhance the opportunities that you all bring to the table. One of the things is that, for myself, the partnerships that she has developed within the community, one that was really important to us was with the juvenile court system. Now that we have a partnership with them, with the probation office, with the intake officers, we are able to work together in order to be able to assist our students so that they can be in school more often, so they can get the great education that is needed. And one of the things that I really appreciated for the school board is when you, hire, when you allowed it monies to be able to hire 13 social workers because our community faces a lot of things. I would like to just to say, please do not let this amazing person an opportunity to enhance our school board pass you by. Select Dr. Dower as your interim board chairwoman. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Haas. Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, Dr. Waltz, for the record, my name is Bill Hosp, and most of you know me from before my retirement. Mrs. Urban has my contact information, and I still vote in Occoquan District. My purpose in addressing you tonight is to support my friend, Barbara Latif, as candidate for school board chairman. You are lucky to have so many good candidates. So let me tell you why you should choose him. When we put aside all the recent dramas that have distracted you and the community, this board has a lot of accomplishments to be proud of. You have improved compensation for teachers and staff. You have reformed hours and transfer options for teachers. You have recognized nurses as licensed professionals. You have fully funded the needs of this school system despite the political pressures. You have recognized and protected the diversity of students and families in the county. You are the first I'm aware of to show the Board of Supervisors a plan to move students out of trailers. The list goes on. Now that you have an opportunity to move forward and build on that progress, Dr. Latif is your best option to lead that effort. You might say I'm partial to him because he's my ophthalmologist, but that's not the whole story. As a retired teacher, I can appreciate the unique skills that I trust uh, that he offers, excuse me, I only have three minutes and I trust you have seen his resume. Let me focus on what I've personally observed. As a medical professional, he is already trained to diagnose problems and arrive at data-driven solutions. It's what he does for every one of his patients. This board will benefit from the disciplined approach he brings to the table. Dr. Latif has the vision to see the forest as well as the trees. He has the wisdom and the intellect to put issues in their proper perspective. He knows how to lead and motivate a professional team. I've seen it at his office. Finally, he has the interpersonal skills to conduct successful negotiations. This is so important now as you work with the Board of Supervisors, not only to fund the school system, but also to get rid of those unsafe trailers. A popular lesson in business classes is about who gets the last orange. The solution is that one person wants the skin to make marmalade and the other wants the inside to make the juice. Select a man who knows how to find a better way as your interim chairman. Please, and thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Relina Smith.
Good evening. My name is Raylena Smith, and my name, uh, my address is on file. I have two little girls that attend the Prince William County School District in kindergarten and first grade. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Barbara Laramore. I met Barbara at preschool when we moved to Woodbridge four years ago. After spending 13 years in the workforce, I suddenly became a stay-at-home mom, and I was slightly lost about how to go about things in a new community. Barbara, of course, introduced herself and made me feel welcome. She apprised me of all the great things the community had to offer. After meeting Barbara, myself and a couple of other moms started meeting regularly for play dates. We would talk about the educational issues that were upcoming and that Prince William County had. I was amazed of how it would go from complaining into a brainstorming session led by Barbara. She would jump on her cell phone, call somebody to find out more information, research the issue that we were discussing then and there, and then share what she found and ask us, how do we resolve this? How do we change this? This is the way that Barbara thinks and her mind works. Instead of complaining about an issue, rehashing it several times with other people, she goes into action. She's a problem solver, she's a doer. If there's a problem, she's going to attempt to find a solution. Barbara also knows how to keep on a schedule. She raises three children who have three different schedules. She's a wife, takes care of a home, and a husband, and finds time, still finds time for friends, and raising community awareness about the issues that she is passionate about. She knows how to keep all her ducks in a row, keep those ducks fed, clean, and healthy. She micromanages this all, sticking to her schedule, and forcing others and herself to stay on task. I believe that she is adept to keeping three tired, cranky children on task every day. She say, has the same ability to lead grown-ups to do the same during a school board meeting. Barbara has this in, in, innate ability to connect with people from all walks of life and to listen. She is not closed-minded and so set in her beliefs that she cannot see other options. She's a very factual person. If your argument can be supported with facts, not just emotion, she could be convinced. She's not only someone that provides structure for meetings, but when dealing with the community and other government entities, she can present as someone who is educated, open to new ideas, not politically closed-minded or arrogant, but who has our children's education as her focus. She is mindful and sensitive to other situations, their lifestyles, cultures, and religions, and we live in an area and a time when that is necessary. I am not originally from this area, and my family recently had a decision of transferring or staying in the area, and we obviously decide to buy a house and live in the Lake Ridge area. Um, our main, one main con that we had was the educational system in Prince William County. Uh, after attending some of the school board meetings and seeing some of the other issues, we, um, I'm sorry, thank you. Bill Gary. Good evening, Madam Vice Chairman, school board members, Dr. Waltz. My name is Bill Gary. My address is on file. I've lived in the county for 30 years, or plus, really, uh, the second time around. I'm here tonight as a strong advocate for Lucy Beecham to be selected as Prince William County's temporary school board chairperson. I've known Lucy and her family for over 30 years. Her oldest daughter, Polly, and graduated from Osborne Park High School with our youngest son, Brent. Lucy was president of, Manasa, of Massa when I was coaching soccer, and our son Brent and her daughter Polly was on my team for the four seasons that I coached. I was president of the Security Bank Corporation at the time, and our paths crossed somewhat in the corporate world. Lucy was United Way's corporate head here in the Manassas area. We also served together in, on, on Osborne Park's High School's Principal's Advisory Council. Like my wife and I regarding our sons, Lucy and her husband were very involved in their daughter's education in schools. Lucy took it much further and became an elected school, uh, member of the school board. As many of you know, Lucy served on the school board for 16 years. In 14 years of the 16, she was the chairperson. Lucy's time on the school board reflected her outstanding leadership, in-depth commitment, and concern for the students, teachers, administrators of our school system. Lucy has stayed involved in our county through one form or another 
since leaving the school board in December 2007. Lucy still has a strong interest and concern for how the county school system operates, educates its students, and educates its students. Lucy is very knowledgeable about the school board systems and budget. Lucy's youngest daughter, Kelly, is a teacher in, in the girls varsity soccer coach at Patriot High School. Her four grandchildren attend Prince William County Schools. I can't think of anyone more qualified, personally and professionally, to serve as the interim school board chairperson. Lucy has proven experience, knowledge, concern, and energy to lead our school board and system again. She can hit the ground running. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Chris Peterson. Madam Vice Chair, Jesse, members of the board, and Dr. Waltz, I am Chris Peterson, and my address and contact information are on file. I am a retired long-term employee of the school division starting in 1971 at age 23. I'm now 71. I was a science teacher, middle and high school principal, a science supervisor, a math supervisor, the art, music, and PE supervisor, and my last 10 years was as an associate superintendent for area three schools. Following retirement, I continued doing projects in the school division at the request of the superintendent. I feel it is my responsibility tonight to speak on behalf of Mrs. Lucy Beecham in seeking your approval of her appointment as the interim acting chairperson. Over my career, I had four occasions to complete tasks that I considered particularly difficult and challenging. The first was to develop a schedule for a year-round school. We used to be year-round in this county. While making schedules is nothing new, my unique task was to design a schedule that integrated a calendar of four color patterns in Dale City with a traditional schedule in Lake Ridge in the same school all to run simultaneously. This was pre-computer days. The second was to apply to the Virginia Department of Education on behalf of Prince William County Schools to become the lead school division to develop the science standards of learning, coordinating the input from 40 public and private schools throughout the school division, Commonwealth, and higher education. The third was to assemble all the relevant data and develop a plan for Dr. Waltz to transition us from a half day to full day kindergarten, including the impact on housing, transportation, staffing, and budget. The fourth was to develop a performance-based compensation plan for Prince William County at the request of the board. The data showed that that plan was very successful, but due to budget constraints was dropped. An expert and well-known national consultant commented that our plan was among the best plans he had ever seen in the country. The common denominator of success in each of these tasks was getting people to work together to accomplish a common goal. Mrs. Lucy Beecham possesses and demonstrated many times over years having people successfully work together to accomplish equally bigger and more difficult tasks than these. Her support over 14 years as chair was immeasurable to our success, one to, one to never exhibit or be swayed by political ideology, Mrs. Beecham is a tireless worker with the high expectations of all. She has a strong sense of keeping schools safe. I have sat with her in hundreds of disciplinary hearings and assure you she is the strongest advocate for safe schools far beyond what our community will ever know. She has an excellent working relationship with the entities of the county government. Our community needs an excellent, accomplished leader with experience in every facet of school operation. Mrs. Beecham's leadership skill, experience, and knowledge will be hard to surpass, and I hope that you endorse her appointment. She will unquestionably accomplish what is best for children. There exists no more important job in this county than that. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Rafa. Members of the board, Dr. Waltz, good evening. My name is Mark Rafa and my address is on file. I'm here tonight on the topic of the appointee for the interim chair of the school board. There are many candidates from which to choose, some more qualified than others. The interim chair will serve the board for roughly six months until the public can elect a new chair. It is imperative for the board to vote for someone who is up to speed with the school board, his processes and procedures, the division staff, and knows how to do the job. We don't have time for 
for on-the-job training. Selecting someone with board experience reduces the number of applicants to Mr. Don Richardson, Ms. Lucy Beecham, and Mr. Sean Brand. Each of these candidates is well suited for the position. Ms. Beecham has the most experience as a former chair of the school board. She is fully capable of performing the duties of chair, and I have no doubt in her abilities. However, I strongly urge the board to vote for someone with more recent experience and former Prince William County school teacher, Mr. Sean Brand. Mr. Brand served the board ethically, honorably, and with the highest level of professionalism. I didn't always agree with Mr. Brand. However, he was always professional and courteous in his discussions with me, and we had many civilized discussions on topics before the board. Prince William County Schools needs a chairman who will act honorably, ethically, and with professionalism. Last October, Mr. Wilkes stated he was an early supporter of Mr. Brand, who, best, who represented the district best. Ms. Ralston, stated that she went through a lot and worked very hard to have Mr. Brand appointed to the board. Each member of the board and Dr. Waltz thanked Mr. Brand for his professionalism and leadership during his time on the board, including serving on the joint CIP. Think about why these things were said when casting your vote for interim chair. The Prince William County School Division and School Board needs to restore the public's trust in the institution. The school board needs a true leader who will perform the duties of chair with the utmost professionalism, and it is for these reasons that I request the board vote for Mr. Brand as interim chair of the Prince William County School Board. Thank you. Chris Salter. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for uh, letting me speak tonight. Uh, my name is Chris Salter. My address is on file with the uh, clerk. Uh, I'm an 18-year resident of Prince William County. I have two children that attend Prince William County schools, currently in elementary school and high school. And the topic of who leads our school board to me is extremely important. The lack of leadership in the chairman's position recently has been discouraging and frustrating, it to say the least. I'm glad that we now have a chance to fill that vacancy with an exceptional person who can get us to a point where we can elect a successor. What I believe the school system needs right now is the most qualified person to fill the role of interim school board chairman. A proven leader who not only knows how to be effective, manage a budget, how to run a meeting, and make sure all of the citizens of Prince William County get a chance to be heard, and who most of all has the best interest of our children at heart. Of all the candidates, there is one person that stands head and shoulders above the rest as the most qualified candidate, and that is our former school board chairman, Lucy Beecham. With 16 years, 16 years of experience on the school board, 14 as chairman, you cannot tell me that there is a better qualified person to fill the vacancy than Lucy. She's a proven and effective leader. She's open-minded, willing to work with everyone on the school board and in the school system. She has more experience than anyone else looking to fill the position, and she has devoted herself to making Prince William County a better place to live, work, and raise your children, not only through her work on the school board, but as a leader in the Chamber of Commerce and other various advisory boards throughout Prince William County and the state of Virginia. She's been praised by teachers and administrators across the county, and with three grandchildren of her own currently attending Prince William County Schools and the fourth starting next fall, there is no doubt that she has the best interest of our children at heart. Since leaving the school board, Lucy has continued to volunteer in the schools and can often be found helping out at T. Clay Wood, Bristow Run Elementary, or cheering on the pioneers at Patriot High School where her grandchildren attend school. Quite simply, there is no better candidate than Lucy Beecham for the role of interim school board chairman, and I encourage you to make that happen. Thank you. Janine Harris. Good evening, I'm Janine Harris. I am a Prince William County resident. My address was previously provided to the clerk. And I'm a mom of three boys. And I'd just like to share briefly my son's school journey and why I'm here tonight to support Justin and Karen. 
Uh, my son currently is in the 10th grade, and when he was in elementary school, he was selected to be in the gifted program. When he was in middle school, he was in advanced math classes, but he had some of his own struggles. Uh, he had a medical diagnosis, and we went for an IEP, but we were denied. We were told that because his grades were well and his academics weren't suffering, they didn't feel that he needed an IEP. Um, I kind of sat and thought, so you want him to fail before he can succeed. Didn't really understand that. Um, the administrative staff suggested that I transition him to a more structured school known as New Dominion Alternative School. I didn't know anyone with children at New Dominion. I didn't know anything about New Dominion. So I reluctantly agreed, and he transitioned there at the end of his sixth grade year. Uh, once he started going there, we were assured that things would change around and things would look better for him, but we really weren't seeing the results that we needed. So I took a day off of work and I went there. And it wasn't, we, we recognized it wasn't the placement for him, so we were able to transition him to Paste East, another alternative school in the county. Again, we weren't seeing the results that we needed. Um, as parents, we had to make a very difficult decision. One of the biggest decisions I ever made in my life was to send him to a residential facility. What we thought would be a four-month stay turned into a 13-month stay, but we were able to get full-time medical people to watch and see how uh, they Ms. Help. Harris, are you here to speak on behalf of one of the candidates? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm getting there. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Yep. So while he was there, he did really well, and uh, they had school there, they had medical there, so we were able, once he was done, he came home. Uh, he was ready to go back to public school. The IEP team felt that he should be in a private placement, so we went with Phillips and Fairfax. The school was, we did well. He showed that he could be mainstream back to school. Uh, the IEP team felt that he needed to stay at private placement. We were both really frustrated. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know who to talk to. I learned of Justin Karen, who is the chair. He was elected chair of SEAC. Um, I didn't know, you know what he could do for us, but I understood that he met with families. He um, was reviewed his IEP. He was able to sit down with me, asked what our goals were, figured out how we could mainstream him back to school. So I can tell you right now, after all that we've been through, today he is going to a new private placement in the morning. He's in the 10th grade, and he has partially transitioned to a public day school in the afternoon. And he's doing exceptional there. Ms. Harris, I'm, your time is up. OK, thank you. David Larimore. Thank you, Ms. Larimore. <laughs> um, Caitlin Sharp. Good evening. I'm Caitlin Sharp. My address is on file with the clerk. I am a mom of two boys, a small business owner, and I've had the pleasure of both working personally and professionally with Barbara Larimore. I have never met anybody more who is positively persistent. She does not know what the word no means. All she knows is how to find a solution. I've seen her activate the community, rally around a problem, find people who are experts, and move through the legislative process and champion for a recess, for more, for more recess for the kids of the Commonwealth of Virginia. I am positive that Barbara will champion for the kids of this community, for the students of Prince William County, and she will not only inform parents about what is going on and inform parents and get them involved in the process to educate them, to know what's going on with them in the schools. She has successfully coordinated with teachers, administrators, 
parents, students, and businesses as the current PTO president at Lake Ridge Elementary. She's advocated and brought awareness to the community for items that would otherwise go unnoticed. Barbara Laramore is not only a champion for her own children, she's a champion for the children of Prince William County. Christian Brenton. Good evening, all. My name is Kristen Brinton, and my address is on file with the clerk. I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the election of Barbara Laramore as interim school board chairman. Our country is faced with extreme division, and our county is no different. It must be difficult to be an elected official in this time, difficult to sort through the many varying opinions of all the people you are elected to serve. Most of us here are parents. I think we can all agree that we all want our children to learn and grow in a safe environment and to succeed no matter their individual challenges. We need leaders with the rare ability to see past what divides us and to bring us together in support of our commonalities. One such leader is Barbara Laramore. I've worked with Barbara over the past several years as on, our, on our elementary PTO. Her energy and enthusiasm are absolutely infectious. She sees everything as possible and she has a way of convincing you that everything is possible also. She recruited me out of the aisles of the giant grocery store. I walked in for cereal and I came out with a newfound purpose as chairperson of membership. And it was fantastic. And now I'm the treasurer. Who knew? A longtime member and current president of our elementary PTO, Barbara is no stranger to working with disparate groups and different needs. Recently, we all saw her help develop an issue into a state bill, then help shepherd it through bipartisan mitigation until it was signed by the governor. This was done not by working with one group in one way. This was a process of many meetings with many parties across any and all aisles in order to find a compromise that would reach her goal, a better learning environment for our children supported by scientific evidence. In all her work, Barbara welcomes anyone who is willing to give their time and effort, always knowing just the right place for them to help. She never turns away a willing hand or an eager voice. She knows that our children are best served by the ideas and energy of everyone who can be invested in their education. She works tirelessly in support of this goal, as evidenced by the progress of HB 1419, developed and nurtured even as her own family endured her husband's chemotherapy. I am very happy to say that both projects had successful outcomes, due in no small part to Barbara's extraordinary energy. This board has been through a lot in the past few years. The internecine struggles have been hard on all parties, the parents, school staff, and I'm sure on you personally. It can't have been easy. I am hopeful, however, that these divisions can heal and we can again work to produce the edu best education for all the children in our county. Barbara Laramore would be an incredible asset to this process. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Edmonds. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Aaron Edmond. I currently re reside in the Occoquan District. I would first like to extend a special thank you to Vice Chairwoman Lily Jesse for your thorough budget presentation last night and the leadership that you've shown as acting chair. I'm coming before the board this evening to express my full support for Barbara Laramore being appointed as the interim chair to the school board until a special election for the chair position takes place this upcoming November. Barbara Laramore currently resides in the Occoquan District, which I also live in, and she has proven to be a community leader that not only, um, that not only we can trust, but we have come to love and trust, and now famously dubbed Recess Mom. Barbara Laramore not only has children that attend school in the Occoquan District, but she has stepped up in credible ways, serving as a PTO pre president at Lake Ridge Elementary and effectively lobbying le legislators down in Richmond for more recess time for children, getting HB 1419 passed in our state house. Over the past year, I've had the privilege of chairing a local ad hoc schools committee to tackle issues like getting our teachers and staff a step in coal increase, closing the achievement gap across the board, and reducing classroom overcrowding. Despite her busy schedule as a mom and community leader, she has been a very active member of her committee and someone I could always rely on. 
And my many interactions with Barbara, she has exhibited she is a people person, a consensus builder, and a person who knows how to negotiate on tough issues, and a person who is extremely passionate about our children who live in Prince William. Not only do I think Barbara would be a great fit to be interim chair, but I have full confidence she will serve us all well and for the better. There are many well-qualified candidates being considered for this position this evening, so it is my greatest hope that all of you, as a school board, will evaluate these candidates on their individual merits and credentials. Everyone deserves a fair chance to be selected for this role. As board members, you are responsible for ensuring this process is fair and transparent. Thank you. Uh, were there any other <clears throat> citizens who want to speak on behalf of a candidate? I have the list up here, but I want to make sure that it, we didn't leave anyone off. Okay. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is 1602, Procedure for nominate, Nomination and Appointment of the Interim Chair. Um, we thought it was uh, important for you to hear how this process is going to work when we take the vote. So the chair now asks the parliamentarian to explain this item. Under this, sorry, under this agenda item, the board will decide the exact way to conduct the nominations and voting process for the appointment of the interim chairman at the next board meeting. Under the board policies and Robert's Rules of Order, the board can choose among different ways to do this. For example, it could take nominations of multiple candidates first and then vote on them either by, let's say, roll call or potentially voting up or down on each nominee in the order that they were nominated. However, the customary way in which the board has done this, uh, voted for selection, for example, of the vice chairman at the organizational meeting in the past, has been instead to have initially a motion by a board member to uh, select a particular individual to debate that motion and vote it up or down. If there are not four votes, a majority of the bo remaining board members to uh, support that motion, then another board member would offer a different motion, similarly naming a different individual. There'd be a debate on that and a vote on that and follow that same process uh, until there were four votes for one candidate. And Although the motion that Mr. Trenum is about to move has technical aspects to it, that's essentially what it proposes. A motion is in, a motion is in order. Madam Vice Chair. Mr. Trenum. I move that the Prince William County School Board designate the method of nomination and voting for interim chairman of the Prince William County School Board be one, upon the chair stating that nominations are open, a school board member may move adoption of a debatable but not amendable motion to appoint a named individual to the position. Two, if the motion first moved is not adopted, a similar motion naming another individual will be in order and the process will be repeated until such a motion is adopted. Madam Chair. Ms. Williams. I second. Discussion? Sorry, discussion? Let's vote. Can we pause for a moment, please? Can we have the, do you have the discussion item? Can I? She wants us to hold anyway, so I thought, you had your hand up for discussion? Yes. No? Yes. You might, go ahead. All right. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry. Uh, speaking to the motion at hand, um, I can count votes, so I won't make a substitute motion or anything like that, but uh, I think we have a very unique process here where we have uh, 20 people that have just applied. Uh, I think that the motion that most enables uh, transparency and openness 
uh, would be something along the lines of a roll call vote where everybody can vote for who they want um, and that would enable uh, recognition for all the uh, different uh, applicants uh, and allow board members to recognize those people and of course it would still require um, a majority vote at the end of the day. Uh, and I think uh, a motion that makes something that should be about the varied individuals that are here instead of motion being an up or down about one person uh, tends to still personalize around that one person. Um, I'm not sure that's the best way, um, but I understand where the board's going to go. I'm sorry, I was going to be quiet tonight, but I'm not. Uh, we talked about this as a board collectively, I thought, um, and I thought we came to an agreement, just like the precedents we've had before. If, Mr. Deutsch, you're not happy with the nomination, there's a time for discussion, and I would imagine at that point you would probably tell the community who you were leaning towards or who you were going to vote for. Um, so I'm just a little surprised that this was brought up again um, when there will be a transparency and the board members will be able to comment on who their preferences were when nominations and such. Anyone else for discussion? Are we ready? That's for May I ask for clarification on who was the second on this motion? Thank you. Let's vote. The vote is six yes, one no, Deutsch, motion passed. Moving on to item 1701, superintendent's time. Thank you, Vice Chairman, Jesse, and members of the board. Let's start as we have done recently with a brief update on my progress in achieving the goals the school board established for me this year. You'll recall that items with red check marks have been reported previously and that the P means the associated work remains in progress. A white check is the subject of tonight's update. Let's look at planning and assessment goals that are central to our continuous improvement efforts. Indicator 2.7 is all about improving performance at schools that did not reach full accreditation the last time around. We're using constant monitoring to determine needs and assistance and instructional coaching to assist our teachers in those schools. We discuss details of how specific schools in this group are doing at every superintendent staff meeting. So that's twice monthly. This allows us to identify what's going right and to make sure we prioritize help from the student learning and accountability team to the schools and levels that need it the most. Since our instructional coaches are a big part of the assistance equation, the accountability and professional learning offices have assessed the contributions of coaching through an extensive report and ongoing study. Student learning results, observation, changes to teacher practice, and direct feedback yield some valuable findings. Implementation fidelity continues to improve, meaning that coaches are helping staff develop the skills and deliver the best practices that lead to better student learning and understanding. Teachers feel supported by the coaches and many credit them with helping to achieve tangible ta classroom successes. The assessment also produced key recommendations for improvements. They include continuing to build knowledge, skills, and teacher team efficacy, and making refinements to the training and support that coaches get, and we are following through. This is all part of the plan, do, study, and act cycle established by and in alignment with our strategic plan. 
This is not a once and done sort of thing. It is a process that continues, but it has us on the road to solid improvement in student performance and to the accreditation status that goes with it. Moving on, let me remind everyone that student success is made possible by the outstanding work of our great teachers and our staff. So I'm thrilled to report that Ashland Elementary School Principal Andy Jacks was surprised at school early today. I was out there with the announcement that he's been named the National Distinguished Principal for Virginia. The Virginia Association of Elementary School Principals chooses the honoree for our state. Ashland students and staff were excited to be part of the surprise announcement. If you want to know more what Mr. Jacks did to earn this award, just ask anyone from Ashland. You can look at the school's presentations to the school board, its social media sites, or check out some of Mr. Jacks' many conference presentations. You will quickly find that excellence is a great description for what's happening at Ashland and that Mr. Jack's leadership as principal means the honor is richly deserved. Some more great news from the National School Boards Association. Prince William County Schools is the recipient of the organization's Magna Award. It's one of only six awards pr uh, presented to large school divisions throughout the United States. Our award recognizes successful strategic efforts to boost the number and percentage of our students who take and pass advanced coursework. Our advanced programs for all initiative is honored for breaking down barriers to enrollment and success, especially among demographic groups who are often underrepresented in advanced programs in other school divisions. Battlefield and Garfield High School's budding entrepreneurs recently brought home honors from the Distributive Education Club's conference. 13 Battlefield High School students are state finalists, advancing to the international competition, while 15 others were honored with certificates for their business proficiency. Garfield High School received a gold recertification for its school-based spirit wear business. Both Battlefield High School and Ronald Reagan Middle School teams did extremely well in the recent Virginia State Archery Tournament. Reagan won its second consecutive state championship in two categories. Battlefield won its first ever Virginia championship in one of the categories. Individual students performed tremendously as well and will be joining the teams at nationals in May. You can check out pwcs.edu for all the more details on our amazing archers. Congratulations to Simron Patibanda, the Grand Park Middle School eighth grader who won the 40th annual Prince William County Spelling Bee. Many other students can be proud of winning school spelling bees in their individual schools and advancing to the county competition. Another success story is Colgan High School's Hannah Sprague, who won first place in the children's literature pre-K category at the recent Educators Rising competitive state event. Congratulations to Anya Michelle, the Reagan Middle School student who won the grand prize in the middle school division of the Prince William Manassas Regional Science Fair. Anya's winning project was titled A Microcosm of the Cosmos. I was fortunate to attend both the middle and high school science fairs back in March, as well as the March 12th Student Leadership Conference. And I've had the privilege of joining School of Excellence celebrations with several of our school board members for Osborne Park, T. Clay Wood, Penn, Porter, Rosa Parks, Enterprise, Battlefield, Forest Park, Bel Air, Tyler, Pennington, Marsteller, and Old Bridge. All of the events were very impressive and the honors well deserved. Our division website recently featured Ms. Nicole Clark, a third grade teacher from Old Bridge Elementary School. Ms. Clark had just picked up her William C. Lowry Mathematics Elementary Educator of the Year Award from the Virginia Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Congratulations to her. Congratulations also to Patriot High School for being named a Project Lead the Way Distinguished American School. It is noted for providing access to transformative learning opportunities. And finally, I had a great time at the March Introduce a Girl to STEAM event at Benton Middle School. 
Mrs. Jesse uh, shared that opportunity with me as well. And I think Ms. Satterwhite, you were there also. So we all enjoyed our time there that night. It featured amazing opportunities to see the use of science, technology, arts, engineering, and math in all kinds of fields, from law enforcement to healthcare and cybersecurity. I know that many young women were inspired to explore STEAM as a part of their future career opportunities. Special thanks to Mr. Gary Sims, the staff of Benton Middle School, and all the volunteers and contributors who made this event a great success. Thank you. We're, hold on just a second. Got to get my cursor in the right place. Moving on to item 1801. And this board, this is on for action. Madam Vice Chair. Ms. Williams. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the appointment of Ms. Jesse to serve as a representative and Mr. Trenum to serve as the alternate to the Prince William County Schools Internal Audit Committee for 2018. I'll second that motion. Okay. Dis discussion. I just love the opportunity. Let's vote. No, no one for discussion. Let's vote. Okay, we are now at 1802 Board Matters, and it is now 1120. I'm sorry, Ms. Jesse, can I call the vote? Oh, I'm sorry, call the vote. <laughs> the vote is seven yes, unanimous, motion passed. I thought that was gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, board Matters, and we'll start on um, with you, Ms. Saddleby. Thank you, Mrs. Jesse. Um, Dr. Waltz, I want to thank you for recognizing our archers at Ronald Reagan Middle School and Battlefield High School tonight. Uh, that was on my list, and I thank you for recognizing them. They have done a fantastic job. They continue to do amazing things with their program, and I congratulate all of them for their um, success in the recent state championships, and best wishes to them as they move on to our nationals. This April is month of the military child, and um, actually, you know what, before I say that, uh, Mrs. Jesse, we have people still waiting for citizen comment time, and can I finish, can we? Yeah go to finish citizen comment time and I can can I get back to board matters afterwards could we possibly do that because usually I think that's that. a great idea thank you if no objection from anyone on the board okay all right citizens time and I have um, Ms. Rubin okay sorry I think it's Cornelia no it's Cornelia Long Cornelia Long, and she's here. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, thank you. Good evening. My name is Cornelia Hawkins Long. My address is on file. Um, Dr. Waltz, greetings. I'm Miss Jessie, school board members. It's been a long evening. God bless you all for doing this and being resilient this evening. I am the immediate past president of the Speech Language Hearing Association of Virginia. I represent 587 speech language pathologists, 87 of whom work right here in Prince William County. And I work right alongside with them. And we are impacting positively over 5,000 students here in Prince William County. During my presidency, one bill passed by the House of Delegates, and that was SB Bill 315. However, there was one bill that I wanted passed, and it did not make it to the House of Delegates, and that was simply to have caseloads reduced here in Prince William County School and in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And so I turned my attention to my local authorities to see what you can do on behalf of students and speech pathologists here in Prince William County. 
We need to decrease caseloads, which will result in increased progress for students, increasing our ability to provide critical thinkers, increase more confident communicators, and to allow for more individualized speech language sessions. In closing, decreasing caseloads is a functional solution for a world-class school division. In the words of Dr. King, who was assassinated exactly 50 years ago on this date, the goal of education is to teach one to think intensively and critically. Intelligence plus character is the goal of education. And I believe if we reduce caseloads for speech language pathologists, we will be afforded this opportunity to our students. Thank you and good evening. Don Fisher. No, oh, hold on. Oh, Ro uh, Rojan Rothbottom. Thank you. All right. Good evening, members of the school board. Today I come before you as Lieutenant Colonel Robotham, and I'm here to celebrate April being the month of the military child. Prince William County is home to hundreds of military families and their children are engaged in all levels of the Prince William County school system. I am a mom of three, two of which are currently in elementary school and one is still in preschool. And so I just wanna spend a few minutes talking about this community. And I'd like to start off by personally thanking Justin Wilk for partnering with me and some of the initiatives that we're doing at the state level to help not only Prince William County children, but the entire state. And also I'd like to thank Allison for wearing purple tonight and supporting the military child because purple is the color that we wear this month for a military child. You know, military, child, military children often move from state to state, even country to country, and definitely from school to school. And you heard several people and members who are offering to serve on this board talk about their military experience and the military experience of their children as a result of moving around the country. You know, this comes with certain challenges and several opportunities for these children. Oftentimes there are educational issues in addition to social challenges that this community faces. Whatever the challenge is, this is a special group of children who move around with their parents in defense of our nation. In all cases, military children have a certain amount of resiliency that is probably unique to them. And Prince William County Schools has helped so many of these children succeed, many of which you heard tonight. I would like to take a moment to personally recognize Dr. Dominic James, who is the Prince William County Project Director for the 2015 Department of Defense Education Military Grant. She is the person responsible in Prince William County Schools for helping the military connected students. This is a very big job and she's doing an outstanding job I can attest to the programs that she has created and how they have benefited not only my children, but the children in the school system. And tonight, I come to you to ask for two things. One, I encourage you and this board to look at making her job a full-time position. Right now, it's only currently funded through this DOD grant, which ends at the end of 19. And I feel that for the size of Prince William County and its location and its community involvement with military children, the county should look to make this position full time and show their commitment. Also, I ask you to expand programs for the military community. Right now, it's largely focused on elementary children and we need to look at all grade levels. We are doing good work, but there's more to be done. You know, I heard lots of awards that we're winning across the division and we need to focus on winning for the military community also. Thank you very much, have a good night. Don Fisher. Lamar Fisher. Cavell Fisher. Maggie Hansford. Good evening, board. It is almost 11.30. There has to be a better way. I was at the Board of County Supervisors meeting last night, longer than most of you all. Because at Citizens Time, when four teachers spoke, Miss Jessie was 
the school board member in the office, in the room listening to us, only four. So my address is on file, my shirt remains, I'm here to talk about teacher compensation. I wanna thank Mr. Wilk, the only board member willing to make teachers a priority in this budget. I knew Step and Cola would be an uphill battle, but I never would have thought that it would have failed six to one to invest in our teachers. My own, my own board member, Gil Trenum, spoke to many of us in Brentsville District and shared he would support it. He didn't. I attended Ms. Soderwhite's town hall. She was unable to give me an answer, but she said she'd email me, and she didn't. When I, began, when I began advocating for Step and Cola, I was told I was too late. I started at the school board hearing. If I was too late, when is the time? When is the time that Prince William County Schools is gonna invest in our employees? Step and Cola is important, and I wish you all would have stayed last night to hear our teachers speak. Here's some information that I shared with the Board of County Supervisors, as you all asked that I do to go to them and ask, so I did. Our school employees are last place within our county and last place when compared to surrounding school districts. Within our county last year, county employees received 4% increase. Prince William County employees, Prince William school employees received 2.7. This year's budget, county employees received 3%. Prince William County schools received 2.7. In the five-year plan, county employees received consistent step increases with 3% increase. Public school employees lose two steps, and we alternate between 2.7 and 2%. Compared to surrounding school districts, Falk here, 3%. Prince William County, 2.7. Fairfax, 6.34%, Prince William County, 2.7. Manassas City Schools, 7.6%, Prince William, 2.7. Loudoun Schools, 5.4%, Prince William Schools, 2.7%. This is important, this is a big deal. I've told you all, within the Virginia Department of Education, the average teacher salary survey, Prince William County is alone. We're decreased by 27, or by 9%, 27 seconds. Um, the candidates that I believe that will be advocates for our students and our teachers are Ms. Laramore, Ms. Zargabor, and Dr. Latif. The amount of energy and support that they give students currently and teachers is needed on this board. Thank you. Mr. Richard Jesse. My name is Richard Jesse. My address is on file, and I don't know why my wife laughed when she said my name. At any rate, uh, I'm, I won't take long. First of all, I'd like to thank the people who spoke at the County Board of Supervisors uh, last night. We have been asking them to do that. They, they did it, they did it very well, and it's appreciated. One of the things that I thought was very important that they do is beg the county board of supervisors. They cannot raise the tax rate, but beg them not to lower the tax rate. I think if you were at that meeting last night, you saw some progress that has started at the school board and has continued with some of the things that we've been asking and demanding that the county board of supervisors step up to the plate. And I think it's done. And being of sound mind, good night. At the door was Regina Anderson. My name is Regina Anderson, and my, um, my number is on file, okay? I'm a former teacher <clears throat> at Ripon Potomac Middle School, um, and also a former middle school instructional support team person. During my time at Potomac Middle School, I was a team leader, grade level chair, co-chair, uh, on the leadership team, and a former instructional team member, as I mentioned, for the county. 
I have some questions. Who would offer up a doctored version of the county teacher evaluation form with two additional pages written in what I considered in punitive language and required a signature if targets were not met, the former principal of Potomac Middle? Days after this document, this altered document, was sent out, it was taken off the list of teachers, of Potomac teachers' checklist after it surfaced on the independent, after it surfaced at Independent Hill, and she was called and told it had to come down. Ray Darlington and Pat Putchery had an emergency staff meeting one day at Potomac and was told that this principal would play to buy the book. What happened? Who informs an evaluating administrator that no teacher be given a superior or exceeds rating on their end of year evaluation? This principal. Who dresses down any teacher for not having the answer to a logistical question during a PLC meeting and not be allowed to explain why she asked? This principal. This teacher's only crime was that she was hired in Prince William County mid-year and was new to the county, so she didn't know all the rules. Who sends a sympathetic assistant principal to a retiring teacher's classroom within an hour after students are released for their summer vacation and informs her that she has to be packed up and out of the building in a half an hour? My visiting son had to help her remove her things within the allotted time. This teacher was not informed, neither will the rest of us, because I left the same year she did. This teacher was not informed, and neither was the rest of the staff that I can recall, to vacate the building at the time frame that this one teacher was given. Who behaves like this? The principal then at Potomac Middle School. She used bullying, punitive measures, and fear to keep staff in line. The environment became very toxic. It became too toxic for me to stay. So I elected to go to a much more peaceful spot. I retired, but I could afford to do it. There are many teachers who cannot. Thank you. Thank you. Now returning to board matters. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Um, thank you, board, for letting us um, finish our citizen comment time. Um, as we just heard a few minutes ago, April is military month of the is month of the military child, and purple up for the military is going to be on Friday, April 13th by wearing purple. And why purple? Purple is a color that symbolizes all branches of the military, combining Army Green, Coast Guard Blue, Air Force Blue, Marine Red, and Navy Blue. More information is in this week's communicator. Mm -hmm. I hope that some schools will be recognizing our military children yeah. and the contributions they bring to our schools. So make sure to thank our military children for their service. They share their parents with our country. And as a military child myself, and as a parent of military children who are now young adults, um, I am very thankful that we do this in our county and that we recognize our military children. Um, I received something today from, it was yesterday, from a Battlefield High School student asking me to share something that's happening at Osborne Park High School. Several high schools are joining together for an event to raise money for hurricane relief for a school in Puerto Rico. So on April 14th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., there's going to be a field day. And um, admission prices vary from $2 to $5. Bring money for extra ticketed activities and support this great student-led effort. So several high schools with their youth leadership, or with their, their youth leadership, um, student councils, different organizations are banding together to help this school in Puerto Rico. So I hope that you'll support this. I know I um, asked our student to contact Mr. Cavitz, and hopefully we can get this advertised in Prince William County Schools e-news also. Um, last night, the school board presented our fiscal year 19 budget to the Board of County Supervisors. During that meeting, Supervisor Canlin brought forward an idea for fiscal year 20 for a school capital fund. This is a significant proposal that addresses critical community needs of reducing trailers and class sizes in a very transparent way. 
When leaders of both boards work together, we can improve opportunities for all of our students. And I look forward to further discussions between our boards and the community about this proposal. Um, tonight, I also want to recognize our Battlefield High School iLight Robotics. And I want to read the letter, and then I'm going to ask if we can play the chairman's video. And this is a letter from a student, and he states it far better than I can. So I'm going to read a letter from one of the um, students who's on the team for the iLight Robotics at Battlefield High School. Battlefield's iLight Robotics would like to inform you of our success in our first robotics competition season so far. iLight placed first in the Chesapeake District after our qualification events against 126 teams throughout Virginia, Washington, D.C., and Maryland. During qualification events, Battlefield was the winner of the competition, and iLight was awarded the Chairman's Award. The Chairman's Award is the most prestigious award at first. It honors the team that best represents a model for other teams to emulate and best embodies the purpose and goals of FIRST. The team was recognized for outstanding safety regarding working with machinery around robots, planning and preparedness for emergencies and more. To wrap up our successes of our first two qualification matches, we also won the Excellence in Engineering Award for outstanding work in the process of engineering a robot with unique concepts, innovative mechanisms and better efficient designs. At District Championships, Battlefield, Battlefield's iLight Robotics team won a triple crown. iLight finished the district with a number one rank, fought fierce final rounds of robot competition, and won first place and won the chairman's award. And they asked if I would um, please showcase their accomplishments tonight and their chairman's video. And so if we could have that video to play for everybody, that would be great. And then I'll finish up with another 60 statement. students. 12 mentors. 7,000 lines of code. 70,000 minds reached. One team. In 2006, a group of passionate students and teachers set out to introduce STEM to Northern Virginia. In a garage in Haymarket, Virginia, Team 1885 built a robot and the journey of inspiring leaders in technology and engineering, better known as iLight, began. In the first year, iLight won the Rookie All-Star Award at the World Championship. We were hooked on FIRST and encouraged to grow a strong, resilient program that welcomed more students to this experience. We are excited to see the inspiration that we share in the community when we host Junior FLL, FLL, FTC, and FRC events. I love seeing the smiles on kids' faces as they discover the same things in FIRST that we still experience in iLight. Yeah! iLight is a family. We learn and grow together giving students direction and the tools they need to succeed in life. To me, the most incredible thing about iLight is that looking back, what prepared me the most for a career in software engineering and Army Special Operations really wasn't ROTC or college, it really was iLight. It's amazing being surrounded by such hardworking, smart people, constantly being held to higher standards every day, being supported along the way, something I definitely don't take for granted. iLight Robotics really changed my son's life. He had never programmed anything in his life. However, that really turned him around. It was his senior year, he said, I know what I'm gonna do. And I said, what's that? He said, I'm gonna be a programmer. Our impact has reached immeasurable heights. Alec has worked to support local autistic kids, senior citizens, displaced military children, at-risk youth, and the homeless. With our donation of laptops and FLL kits to an orphanage for autistic kids in Jamaica, we have touched many international communities. I'm most proud of the impact our team has had on the community through summer camps for the past six years. Getting to know that children have been exposed to STEM through activities and lessons that I have created has changed my life. It has built my dream to become a STEM educator as a physics teacher. Year after year, iLight can be depended on to manage our events in-house. iLight first events at Battlefield High School are consistently managed with attention to detail and unparalleled gracious professionalism. First Chesapeake is honored to have 1885 as a part of our district and incredibly grateful for their support. Our team's legacy has been maintained by our students who go through the first progression of programs. I think iLight's greatest strength is providing opportunities. It is what we do, it is who we are, it is what iLight is, it is what we are. Our earlier students are now professionals, inspiring the next generation, mentoring, coaching, volunteering, and sponsoring first teams, continuing to make us an unyielding force for first. Many thanks to Battlefield High School for sharing that with us today. And then I would briefly want to address our Ronald Reagan Middle School community. Um, I completely understand your concerns and frustrations. Your questions and your comments have and continue to be heard. 
The process has taken staff a very long time. It's already been six weeks since I made a statement to the community members who attended our Gainesville District Town Hall. I believe all of us in the community are looking forward to this issue finally being resolved. It is my great hope that the report will be finalized soon, and I'm quite frankly disappointed it's not completed yet. I continue to monitor what is occurring as I have the entire time. I want to thank you all for your patience during, very, during a very difficult time. And um, thank you very much for your time during citizen comments tonight. Mr. Trina. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, I'm going to try and be really quick here. Um, I want to thank uh, the uh, Gainesville Middle School Advisory Council for having me out uh, a couple of evening, uh, weeks ago in the evening. Also, I uh, enjoyed uh, uh, back to uh, school, not back to school, good Lord. Uh, school of Excellence events at Haymarket Elementary School, Pennington Traditional School, and Marstella Middle School over the last couple of weeks as well. And like I told the folks at Marstella, it's like going home again as you see the students, the teachers that your, your children had when they were much younger, and uh, it's always good to see the uh, familiar faces. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is uh, since we're on the theme of um, uh, the uh, month of the military child, uh, one of the organizations that I, I like to, that I'm very uh, supportive of that I learned about actually as, be, as I was being deployed is a group called Our Military Kids. Their website is uh, ourmilitarykids.org and what they do is they are focused on support for uh, reserve and guard uh, members that are um, deployed and also for wounded military members after they come back. And specifically what they do is they, they use the money they raise to fund uh, scholarships for those, for those children to be able to participate in uh, sports or uh, music camps or uh, arts camps and things like that. So if, uh, what I always tell people is if you're not sure or you want to help the veterans some way, help their kids, and that's a way you can do it directly. And uh, I also like the fact that it's uh, headquartered here in Virginia and has actually started in Virginia. So um, with that said, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Ms. Ross. Yes, thank you. Um, let me just speak also to uh, military children. I'm a military brat, Army, thank you. The, th the thing that I like so much about here in Prince William County is that you are really, you embrace the child. You really embrace them. And that's different and from a lot of places. Now, grant you, when I was, you know, a military child, it was a long, long, long time ago we're talking about. But, and people tried, but they did not know what you know today. So I thank Prince William County School District. Was it a year or two years ago, was it uh, when the uh, Secretary of Education came to visit us at Penn? Was it last year? Last year. It was last year. Thank you was very interesting. She came, of course, to see what we were doing here at Penn Elementary School because of the number, pardon me? No, Penn, remember we were over at Penn. Ashland. Ashland. Ashland? Are you sure? Positive. <laughs> Okay, what about the year before last year? When they, the, they, may have had some, they may have had something at Penn, yeah. but when the secretary came to visit, that was last year. That was her first year. Okay. All right. Anyway, her, what, what she was looking for was to see just how well we were doing with you know, the large number of children that come in. And um, I thought it was quite interesting because, you know, growing up that way, you never see anybody and nobody seems to care because, you know, in a year or two or three, maybe four, you're off to somewhere else and you start this game all over again. But I thank uh, Prince William County Schools because they really do a good job. And if you like what, we're, what they're doing around the children, and for everything that we do, we say thank you. Thank you, Dr. Waltz. Uh, I'll try to be brief uh, and want to thank all the uh, candidates who came out tonight and spoke a lot of great speeches. Uh, and uh, I look forward to evaluating, really thinking about that decision. Uh, I want to reckon, um, uh, um, reference a couple of events. Uh, last night, I, I did have my two and a half year old. so. 
Um, I did not go to the BOCS, but I did take him to college and career night at Forest Park uh, High School, and he colored his Paw Patrol book. He was really good for like 45 minutes. So, yeah, that was a big win. Um, gosh, uh, but that was a really great event by Forest Park Counseling. They had about five admission reps there. Good question and answer session. Um, I did have a chance to also visit some schools earlier in the day. I had a work from home day, so I did go uh, and do a morning visit uh, to Potomac High School and greet the teachers there before they came in bright and early at 6.15, 6.30 a.m. Um, and had a fun time there. Uh, visited Mary Williams uh, later on for my lunch break. Uh, Lynn Colon is an outstanding principal. Uh, she has an outstanding staff. Um, she is so positive and has a lot of energy um, and very engaged with her students. Uh, outstanding principal at that building. Uh, a couple other events, I did go to the Dumfries Easter egg hunt uh, in the town of Dumfries right before Easter. And then Dumfries Elementary had a, a great event uh, right after our last school board meeting, a community carnival, huge turnout. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Principal Coleman uh, for putting that on with her staff. Um, I would be remiss, I, I do have to say, although I unfortunately did not have enough time to really box the time off and cancel some appointments I had, um, uh, Ms. Steele eloquently mentioned, and it came up a couple of times, the superintendent, uh, about Andy Jacks. Um, and uh, we have a, Ms. Steele and I also, both our kids go to Ashland. Um, Andy is uh, not just a principal in my district, but the principal of my kids. Uh, he's a personal uh, friend and a mentor. I'm always learning from him, and uh, I, I'm just blessed that you know he is, he's there, he's doing great things, uh, and not only doing great things, but he's sharing best practices, and he's going all over, um, not just Virginia, but the country to speak and talk about some of the great things he's doing, the programs um, at Ashland, and I could go on and on. Rojan left, but I do want to mention it was ironic today because I was talking, I know she's Air Force, um, I had a call today uh, with the director of curriculum at Mascuda uh, Public Schools in Illinois, and that is right next to Scott Air Force Base, and they have, I think, 50 to 60 percent of their students are military students, and so having that call and always trying to learn best practices, a great conversation about some of the programs they have in place. I mean, for that type of proportion, of course, it's a much smaller district than the numbers. It's not apples and oranges. Um, I'm apples to apples, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm tired. Apples to oranges would make sense. Um, but anyways, so it was great that I'm happy and I thank her for recognizing the work we're doing and there's a lot more that can be done. Um, Ms. Satterwhite has been a great partner with military families as well. Um, so I wanna thank everyone for that. And of course it is Autism Awareness Month. Um, as a parent of a special needs child on the autism spectrum, um, it's a very uh, important month for my family. Uh, and I, I'm honored to represent other families in this county uh, with children of special needs. Um, it is a truly unique experience um, and an ongoing every day is, I mean, is a new day. Uh, and it, it's, it's a blessing and um, learning a lot uh, about myself as a parent as I go along um, with my child. And I also want to thank my wife for stepping in a lot of the times when I am clearly not there and I'm here till almost midnight. So anyways, thank you all. Um, thank you. I'm trying to keep it short as well. I just wanted to thank Freedom High School for um, hosting uh, First Baptist of Woodbridge's uh, family Easter celebration at the high school. Um, I know that um, First Baptist does a lot of work within our schools uh, and, and recently did a, a sort of a, a book bag drive, if you will, for some of our elementary schools. Uh, so that was nice to see um, the community uh, come out and uh, be present. Um, I'd also like to um, just take a second and thank the teachers who did come and do what we asked, which was speaking before the Board of County Supervisors. Um, it is important. Uh, when you come and speak before us, we have... Uh, uh, our funds are limited and the people who give us the money are the ones who really need to hear what you have to say in addition to the school board itself. Um, so I'd like to thank the four teachers who um, came out and spoke. Uh, did not get to stay for your presentation, but I was sent it on Facebook, so I will be watching it. Unfortunately, I had to get my high schooler home. Um, and he was already there quite late, uh, much to his dismay, but I'm sure he'll be learned it in public service here shortly. 
Um, in addition to that, I just wanted to uh, mention, uh, I got an update from uh, the governor's school director, uh, Dr. Jason Calhoun. Um, I just think it's important every now and again to recognize the wonderful uh, things that the governor's school does and um, just highlight ag again how proud I am that we are a part of that. Um, as of today, we have 53 uh, students who have already been accepted into um, colleges. Um, they range, well, they're just all over the country. Um, and in addition, in addition to that, um, there are several students who have been offered full rides to schools, as well as many um, others have received receive the designation of scholars. Um, so it's just an exciting time for the governor's school and um, I'm gonna try to do better at bringing more updates uh, regarding our students at uh, the governor's school because it's an outstanding program. And the last thing I wanna mention, um, just because it's near and dear to my heart and I'll be doing it tomorrow, yay, enrolling a kindergartner. So if you have a student who is uh, gonna be turning five and entering Prince William County Schools, uh, kindergarten registration is uh, tomorrow for the first date for several schools. There's also an additional date of April 19th, and then there's normally a kindergarten orientation. Uh, I would ask you to contact the school that you um, are in the district for to find out more details. Um, and um, again, I start another journey in my vested interest in Prince William County Schools. And last but not least, I just have to, uh, of course, give a shout out to my high school alma mater, Woodbridge Senior High School. It was nice to see everyone here. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm waiting on my shirt. So thank you. I hope you all have a good night. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, a couple of things really quick. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Rosa Parks Elementary School and the uh, staff and teachers, our staff and students there, uh, and for their incredible work with um, heart health awareness um, that we just uh, saw earlier today. Uh, they're a, an exciting school, and it was a joy to see all the young kids and uh, their hard work. Uh, an upcoming announcement for April. Uh, it's, it may be one board meeting early for this announcement, but April 29th at 10 in the morning at Hilton High School is the annual, uh, 10th annual Kyle Wilson uh, Fitness Walk. Uh, it's being done for the second year in a row in conjunction with Kyle Wilson Elementary School, uh, and it's a, an exciting uh, community time uh, to uh, recognize the legacy of an, a, uh, an incredible young man and uh, continue to support uh, the work that their foundation does, so, and uh, as well as the, uh, the elementary school. So definitely encourage everyone to come on out and uh, support this great community event. Uh, one, uh, one more note for tonight. Uh, so we had 20 uh, candidates come forward and put their names in to be uh, applicants for interim chair. Uh, and it uh, was an exciting night uh, getting to hear from all of them. Uh, we got to enjoy the last two weeks reading through resumes and uh, bios. And one of, you know, I think pieces of paper and hearing from people uh, are a great way to learn about them. I've also enjoyed over the last uh, two weeks uh, calling through and talking one-on-one uh, -on -one with candidates, and I'm just about finished talking to everybody. And I really appreciate that time and getting to learn uh, from all of the uh, experiences and the visions uh, for all the different applicants. Uh, I just have, have one thought and one challenge, and I think uh, this board could do an exciting thing um, if we surprise the community. Um, and, you know, we've got a lot of exciting uh, people that applied. And I think there's a lot of potential for the board to go ahead and work through and uh, hash out uh, somebody we could all agree to for who that chair candidate would be. And maybe we don't all get a first pick, but maybe we can come forward with a, a consensus uh, as our uh, leader for the next uh, six to eight months and really turn a corner there and show the community unity. So I uh, would love to uh, see now how the next two weeks of conversations go and hopefully we can all surprise the community. Um, I want to thank all the candidates for coming. I've been there and stood at that podium, and it's a very nervous time. I know for us it's 20 candidates, but for you it's one five-minute speech that you don't want the red light to go off on you, and you feel you've won if you just get past that red light. 
because everybody would say, I'm so impressed because she knows how to manage her time. Uh, but it's the little things, and I do appreciate it. Uh, I do want to just comment um, to Mr. Dolch. Uh, as a board, um, in terms of our ethics, that we decided that um, we would go with the majority vote and um, the, the selection was to go with what we've done in the past. This is how we voted in the past and we did not want, as a board, we decided that we did not want the candidates to feel that we're changing everything midstream. Uh, this board has gone through a great deal. Um, the transition, my personal goal, and I'm here I think for one more meeting, uh, is that it is seamless and that we can develop some harmony and a sense of professionalism on how we work. I also wanted to address uh, tonight um, this sense that the board did not want to hear the persons talking about a personnel item. Personnel items, have, I've learned, uh, it's just a very serious thing. And when you're into litigation, what you say, how you say it, can create problems. And you notice that Ms. Satterwhite, as a board member, was very, uh, she's still writing, she writes all the time, but she was very selective of what she said because personnel matters are, again, sensitive, and we have to be careful. And I hope that message gets out to them. It's not that this board does not want to hear. Uh, this is a public forum, and we want to hear everybody's thought. Um, I went to several, several uh, School of Excellence events that Dr. Waltz has already mentioned, and he and I were there. But I wanted to, one, one that I went to was at Bel Air. And so Ms. Rawson said, what are you doing at Bel Air? Well, the, the principal there, at Mac, Mrs. McDonald, was one of my babies. And I am just so very, very proud of her. And I think Dr. Walls, she had to go through a transition. And she came out on top. And I said last night at the board meet, in, in the VOC meeting, that was my first school that I worked with in Prince William County, believe it or not. And I looked at the auditorium, when we talk about this infrastructure, that is the smallest auditorium. I don't remember it being that small. But one thing I noticed that she can't get all of her kids in that auditorium. So, you know, when they built that school again, nobody anticipated that uh, the school system was gonna grow as quickly. But that was a 45-15 school and it was the first school I landed in. And so it's all about transition. She did a wonderful job. And I also wanted to comment on Mr. Sims. Um, Gary Sims is uh, a community person. Uh, he loves working with kids and inspiring them. And I wanted to just make sure that he knows that I'm watching him. We go to church together also, but this man, really loves what he does, and I just want to thank him. And to the board, midnight. We're gonna all turn into a pumpkin or something, but we're getting out of here. This meeting is adjourned.